Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ladies, welcome to the episode of Tommy Talk. My name is Juan. This is my Anthony. This is a judo podcast for judo players by two judo players. So, Anthony, I'm not going to ask you how you're doing. I'm going to say, Dong Hei Fat Choi. Happy, yes, happy Chinese New Year. New Year. Today I'm, also doing, I'm also New doing, Year. Hand, I'm doing the hand technique, too. I'm doing the hand thing. Let's see this. If you get audio version, I'm doing the hand thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I already kind of told you, but I don't know when Chinese New Year is. I'm... I'm already really bad with dates, right? I was forced to basically start learning how to use a calendar on my phone a couple few years ago, actually, because of how bad with dates I am. Um, and uh-huh. let's just start off with, I've always been bad with dates as a kid. I've always been bad with dates. I've actually um, accidentally stood someone up that drove five hours to come see me before. And that made me feel so bad. Oh my God. That um, afterwards, I took it. I, I basically had really good memory about when things happened. And in my mind, it's if I can't remember it, then it means it wasn't that important in the first place, anyway. Or you're not that important in general. So, but what happened is as I got older, blooded, old, man. That's cold blooded right As there. I got older, <laughs> either, either my memory is getting worse or, um, a lot more things are going on and I can't keep track of it anymore. Plus with my job. Mm-hmm. And also now that I know a lot of people abroad, like I, I get my time zones mi- mixed up cause I work East coast hours. And so I'm keeping track of a lot of stuff. So I'm like, okay, I should probably learn how to use a calendar. So <laughs> I have multiple <laughs> calendars. Um, what do you, what do you mean? Learn how to use a calendar. There's a, there's a calendar has no, a date. It, okay. I'm going to rephrase that. There. Make it a habit. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure like a lot of people are like, Oh, I'm going to journal. I'm going to write a diary. I'm going to journal. I'm going to make a to-do list, a shopping list. Like, and they don't form the habit of using it. So it took me like a long, actually a couple of years to actually get in the habit of using a calendar. So I'm pretty good about uh, doing that now with um, some exceptions. Like for example, that one time I, um, there was what Martin was it Martin Luther King Day or something, uh, where Monday what was a holiday. One day it was a holiday. It was a long weekend. Yes, Monday was a holiday. Yes, yes. For us, and we just in the, in the past. Yeah, it, and it we just Monday, changed yes. to our new schedule at the dojo. I totally yeah. forgot I was supposed to teach class that night. So that was one <laughs> example of like obviously it's not a problem now because I'm used to the new schedule. But that was like the first week or second week of the new schedule. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm using the calendar, but um. Yeah, I didn't know it was Chinese New Year. My parents called me and was like, what time are you coming over to pick us up tomorrow? And I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that kind of threw a wrench into my plans of getting stuff done for work. And because I, I like having things planned out in my head of what I'm going to do today, tomorrow, next week. And it's just like everything's um, lined up. So, um, yeah. And the lunar, I don't know how the lunar calendar works. So it's, you can't blame me for not knowing when Chinese New Year is because it's at a different date every I, year I, I in think the Gregorian I can, calendar. I can blame, I can blame the Chinese guy to not know what Chinese New well, Year is. Well, you see, that's blame. racist, man. You see, it's in my genes. <laughs> I know how the, the lunar I calendar know, works. I know the Aztec calendar. Okay. I have a giant <laughs> scroll over here made of stone and stuff that I have to rotate every so often right here in the corner of my house. All right. No, I, I just think I need a I need a download an app or something that reminds me every year of uh, all the major ch- lunar holidays in, in Chinese culture. But that is what it is. But um, yeah. sad news is uh, as we're recording this, it will be news. But um, I woke up and then the first thing I read was like 10 people were shot dead at uh, Monterey Park, which is uh for mm-hmm. at a new year chinese new year lunar new year whatever um festival right and monterey park for mm-hmm. those who don't know in la is a very asian chinese area that's where all the good chinese food is and where i was supposed what? to go take not in yeah. chinatown <laughs> chinatown's not really chinatown <laughs> anymore but that's that's very true <laughs> in a lot of places actually because they get priced out right um but mm-hmm. anyway i was supposed to go uh, that's actually nearby where I was supposed to take my parents and where I was today, where I just came back from. So I'm like, oh man, great. I get to drive, drive to that place. And I was checking whether they caught the shooter yet. And at the time they did not catch the shooter. Um, yeah. Long story short, I went there <laughs> and then I found out 
he ended up driving to my house, like around to my house, and that's where they they barricaded himself <laughs> and stuff. So he went the the, <laughs> the the Mitsuo, right? The Mitsuo was it the Mitsuo? No, it was at the, the near the Damo Mall the Cal- by the Tokyo Central, Tokyo Central and Hobby Lobby area. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Okay, it's actually r- right, like <laughs> literally a couple of minutes walk away from my physical therapist where I go for physical therapy. So <laughs> it's not that far away from my place. Um, yeah, so my wife was anxious about that and. Yeah, it was just interesting. Um, and it's also bad luck to talk about this kind of stuff in Chinese New Year. So like when I was there, I was trying to like, why are you doing it then? I wasn't talking, <laughs> I wasn't doing it. My dad was doing it. <laughs> so I had to stop talking about it. And there were kids it's, it's there. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because Matt, Matt's favorite, Matt's favorite uh, Hong Kong style cafe or one of them, I think, is in that same area. And yep. him, he Mine took his too. date today to that area too. Oh and he was gosh. like, "Hey, well, let's go to the carnival." And it, it was it was all marked off and all that. He, so he told me like, I, I actually hit open. Lo- I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> I hit a lot of road closures and traffic on the way there, and I was wondering mm. why. And I I guess that was why because he was as I left my house, he was coming here. So, um, yeah. So let's uh, <laughs> talk about a different topic because I can totally see that becoming right. political so, if people listen to j- it anymore. So I know. I just want to wish. All of our viewers out there, whether you're Chinese, Asian, celebrate, don't celebrate, it's happy Lunar New Year. Whether mm-hmm. it's Chinese New Year to you or Lunar New Year, you're the rabbit. Please have a good year. All right. So with that, we're going to change something different to another happy thing to happen. So this past uh, Friday, our head instructor, Sensei Felipe Morote, we, he got his promotion uh, early in the week. Uh, I think six- it was a week before Friday. Like it was yeah. a little more than a week. Yeah. Yeah, but he got his official promotion from USJA that he has been officially promoted to sixth dawn, which is for judo players a very high, a very um landmark because mm-hmm. you go like you get your brown belt, you get your black belt, you're a black belt for a long time, but it's very rare that a lot of people that most people get to their what we was tradition called coral belt or red white and belt. And you might hear me joke around. I got jokey names for it. I call it like peppermint belt or your candy cane belt and stuff, uh, but. It's a very high honor and not everyone gets it. And we just want to like congratulate. We're so proud. We're so happy to have Sensei. I know he listens to the podcast. So oh, he must he's yeah, loving he, this he, part. No, he loves it. So oh, yeah. he's he gonna look this for part. it this week. He's gonna listen to the whole episode this week. <laughs> <laughs> we should save this to the end then. Make him listen to the whole podcast. <laughs> it's kind of like what I do to my my uh, wife, because sometimes I'll be like, Oh yeah, I was I was bragging about you today, or I was talking shit about you today. I will say that. And she's like, What? Oh, what yeah. did you say? And then I'll be like you're going to have to listen to the podcast. And then she was like, which episode? I'm like, I'm not telling you. So you got to listen to every single one. Yes. <laughs> More hits. <laughs> but um, we want to congratulate him. And we posted pictures of the event that we had at him. Uh, we held on last Friday at this point. It'd be but in the future. Mm-hmm. It would be in the past. Uh, but we posted pictures on our Instagram and our Facebook. So you want to see them. They're up there and stuff. I gave a speech. Anthony, your great speech up there and stuff. And it was just, it was very it's very um, like I, I'm so proud and happy for him that to get this. He deserves it. And it's funny when I posted this, I actually had a lot of people message me about, oh, I thought congratulations to Cincy Fleet. I thought you're already a six. I know. So, and I was like, why would he be a six don and not wearing a six don belt unless he just he's he's that cool. He just he only yeah. wants to wear his black. <laughs> no, like uh, I I I guess this can be misinterpreted if uh, I said it I say it wrong, but basically. In my head, he was already there. Like, do, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Especially since I don't really care yeah. about belts kind of thing. But in my head, he was already at that level. So for mm-hmm. me, this is kind of like, oh, God, about time. Like, you know, like, um, I feel like <laughs> yeah, yeah. people people really should have. Uh, I guess this kind of sound like a dick when I say that, but people should have recognized this earlier. He should have gotten <laughs> a long time ago. Um, well, I, so, yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go, go ahead. I'm, I, I should no, no, go ahead. Go I, ahead. I, I make. Well, I was. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say. Well, what people don't know is that, um, and we talked about it a little bit at the dojo, is that um, Sensei Philippe did take almost like a ten year break away from judo. Mm-hmm. When he came to America, he trained judo a little bit at Sautel, but then decided to step away from it because of his hip problems. I believe it was. We just took some time away, and it, like I think it was about ten years he took off. So you have to imagine that if he didn't take those ten years off then he would have had this belt maybe 10 years earlier, probably, you know? Yeah, I'm not, I was going to say something about <laughs> that, but let's, I'll, I'll just not say it. I don't want to cause any drama. 
from. Not with Philippe. I don't want to be missed. I'll tell Philippe in private what I was going to say if he listens to this. But um, yeah, 10 years away. Yeah. That's, that's okay. <laughs> and if you, I'm going to go through like some of his little accomplishments. I know some people are, I know he might listening. I might get some stuff wrong and be like, Juan, you got this wrong again. I'm like, I'm sorry. I got a lot to remember. He was the youngest black belt in Sweden, I believe. The youngest uh, ever. Yeah. Did he tell you the story about that? Yeah, yeah. He's told me story a bunch of times and stuff. So. Yeah, so long story short, Jan Blooming gave him his black belt while he was at a training camp outside of Sweden. Because by the time, Sweden has a minimum age limit for getting a black belt, a shodan. And But Jan Blooming gave him the, the black belt outside of Sweden. So when he went back, he was like, mm -hmm. Jan Blooming gave me a black belt. And they're like, well, nobody there is going to say you can't be a black belt because of your age because <laughs> Jan Blooming gave it to you. So they just let him be, get a black belt. So. Mm -hmm. so him and his friend were the two youngest to get their black belt in Sweden. The ch ages might change and stuff. But at the time, he was youngest. He was on the Swedish national team. I believe he was a national champion. As well as being, I love saying this, but being the Scandinavian champion. I just love saying that he was the Scandinavian champion. And I know he hates to want to talk about this, but I believe he did qualify. He did qualify for the Olympics, but didn't go because of a, something happened. I, I always I forget think it was what an injury. Happened. I think it was a, yeah. a knee injury at the time. I think it was. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he wasn't able to go. He did qualify for the Olympics. So he was supposed to go to the first LA Olympics. And it's funny, he'll be here for the second one. <laughs> <laughs> we got to push him on the mats and compete. Yeah, we got to just drag him on there somehow. No. <laughs> we'll take someone out real quick. Hey, I need to show you something. Come on, me. Shh, shh, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Put a wig on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go out there, sensei. Make us proud. <laughs> um, but yeah, he has all these accomplishments. He traveled up and down Europe with the national team and stuff. Um, he just... He's just a great instructor, great teacher, has all these great things to teach because of his high level of, com of competing. And it's also just different things that other instructors don't teach all the time. And it's hard to explain what, what it is. But it's, it's a just, trade secret. Is it, is it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, my hands are doing the magic pose now. Magic. <laughs> and if you want to know, please come to Hollywood Judo. <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday for the adult class for open mat Ronder every Saturday. No, yeah. Um, he really has a... I personally think it's an unorthodox way of teaching, but according to him, it's what a lot of like high level competitors do anyway. But he also mm -hmm. makes it work for recreational people like me, you know? So I, I, I don't, I mean, there's a reason why I drive in a freaking hour and a half there or an hour on average to the to club instead of going to the four nearby clubs near me. Like that was, that's one of the big mm -hmm. reasons Philippe is, a really good coach and i'm super proud of him like i said it's he should have got it a long time ago but um obviously it's not up to me to decide but yeah congrats philippe uh next not... red <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right so congratulations philippe and we're all proud of you we're all happy to have you and if you're in the la area and you want to train with the coral belt come over to hollywood judo chance and say flipping us <laughs> yeah it's funny because well, well, this is the last thing I'm going to say about it, uh, seriously. But <laughs> when he, I would not, I had ordered the belt a month ago uh, from Japan mm -hmm. and it came. It was a present from me to him. And um, he wanted it to look at it. I wouldn't let him see it until he got the rank promotion. And the moment mm -hmm. he got the email, he was like, bring your, bring the belt tomorrow. And I'm like, but I kind of want to wait until this, this past Friday to give it to him. But I'm like, Okay, well, I'm going to say, like, no, we, we got to wait another week. Like, <laughs> even though no he got it right. So, <laughs> yeah. And it was another interesting thing. I don't know if I'll put it out there, but why not? Um, he was telling me that on his certificate, I didn't notice it myself, but he told me after I was posting, it's like, if you notice, they actually wrote my um, my application date as my start date as being a black belt. So I've been a black, so I mean, a black belt. I've been in a coral belt for like three or four months now, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, all right, so congratulations. Now let's move on to some other interesting judo news. Now, nothing super big has happened in judo lately. It hasn't been any big controversy or anything. So there's a little bit, there's a, if you're a video game person, something happened in video game world that's very interesting because of judo. Street Fighter is going to put in their first real judo character in the game. 
It's a female character. She's French. She does judo and ballet, and her name is Mano Manu. What's what's his name? I don't remember. Mano? I don't like the character, so I didn't just don't even bother. Of course, this guy complains about everything. This guy. Remember when I said I don't? When it's not important, I don't remember it. So. Yeah, yeah. And her name was Mano, or I, that's how you pronounce it, I guess. It's a really I don't know if that's her French name or not. She has actually asked Yannick if that's a French name. Yeah. But the characters, a judo player and ballet person. I've already seen people complain online about she's already broken because apparently her moves will pull you in. That's easier for a throw, which how, like, how else is is a grappling yeah. factor gonna work? Like <laughs> yeah, seriously. But my thing is just in these fighting games where they're projectile fighting games and stuff. You don't see a lot of good grappling characters. I know people are like, this person's great. Uh, Zang Gif is amazing and stuff. You don't see a lot of them because, in my opinion, in projectile games, it's like, how many get into you and stuff? How many grab you to throw you? So it's a different dynamic to play a game. And they always, in my opinion, suck. Because Street Fighter, like they've had the sumo guy, they've had the pro wrestler, they've had definitely, they've had like two or three pro wrestlers in the game. The last one they brought in the Sambo Fighter, which was another French guy that was a Sambo Fighter. No, the last one they brought in was actually Laura, which is a, supposedly Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but I think it's actually closer to judo, honestly, which is gonna, it's going to yeah. be funny given the context of this episode. But <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I think Laura is technically the last one. You're thinking of the Sambo guy, which is Abel. Abel was in Street Fighter 5. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's no, Street Fighter 4. And this is Street, Street Fighter, Fighter 6. Four. What, what, no. what do you mean? With the five and six? What? No, this Abel is, is Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Street Fighter six. This game's been this game's been out since I was a kid. All right, I remember playing <laughs> this game with quarters when I was a kid, and it's six. This is BS. This is like Street Fighter twenty or something. All right, <laughs> we give you that BS Alpha Alpha Omega Alpha Turbo Twist whatever they add, call it BS Street Fighter six. My ass. <laughs> and I'm just gonna say, like I said, in these projectile games, these um. Grappling character, in my opinion, don't work the best. That's probably why I didn't put a judo fighter in there earlier, which I'm kind of surprised because it's a Japanese game. If you want a game that actually play grappling characters for fun, in my opinion, I know people are going to think I'm a, this is terrible of me, DOA. You want to play Leon, Bassman, Bayman, um, what are the other ones? I can't remember one of the ones named right now, but they had some fun grappling characters in that game. And even in a Tekken, I'm not sure if Tekken there is a Street Fighter is a judo player. I know there was in um like we're both KOF fans. We're both mm-hmm. SNK. I love people. KOF, yep. Yeah. You got you got Daimon, okay? Yep. Even Daimon, Daimon sucks in my opinion. You have to be <laughs> amazing to play Daimon. He's a judo guy with no judo gi on. <laughs> okay. I love how in that game his forward ukemi is a hit. That's amazing. <laughs> hey, rolling he'll, thunder. Rolling thunder. Yeah, it's a crack shoot right there. Just an over the head kick, but Judo players just don't do that well in these games. The only game I think they do well is DOA pretty much because there's no projectiles and a pro wrestling game. That's it. I just think it's kind of ridiculous that they came out with this character um, given how strict and traditional judo is. You know, like you don't see, mm-hmm. like if you look at E Honda, at least it's like, oh, he's a sumo character. Looking at this character, I I wouldn't be able to tell she's a judo character. You know, so... Oh, she, has a, she has a judo gi on. She has a black I'm belt. I'm surprised because Capcom, Capcom's a Japanese company, right? So I'm surprised like the uh, yeah. Photocon and All Japan Judo Federations didn't have an, any input on this. Like, mm. I'm not Japanese, so no, I wouldn't say no it's way. like misrepresenting it. But as a judoka, I'm kind of like, I, I don't want people to associate this with judo. But <laughs> that's just my opinion. It's but. a judo it's a judo ballet fighter, okay? Which is funny because I, I don't know how many guys that, how many judo players I know that are like, when I have a daughter, she's gonna do judo and ballet. And I'm like, oh, here she is. Here's the judo okay. ballet fighter. All you guys want your daughter to be like. <laughs> so look at, uh, what what's her name? I forgot her name, Yuri, which was from Street Fighter okay. Five, And she is a Taekwondo mm-hmm. person. And at least her moves look like Taekwondo. And she's kind of badass, right? But. I can't take this character seriously. I seriously cannot. Like, um, maybe on release. Oh, oh my God. You remind but... me. <laughs> okay. I got one for you. Go, go ahead. Do you remember virtual? Do you remember virtual yes, fighter? Virtual fighter. Yes. I, that was actually okay. my favorite virtual before fi- I found King of Fighters. Really? You like virtual? I wasn't a huge fan of virtual fighters. They're okay. The very last virtual fighters that came out, I think it was like virtual fighter five or six. Mm-hmm. Legitly. Um, they had a judo character in it, and it was a zombie judo guy. Do you remember that? I don't remember that, but I I, I was a fan of it because it was actually the first fighting game I played. 
as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and but again, my friend, that was Sega a... Genesis. I think it was the vir- oh, yeah, virtual. Yeah, was yeah. And was, at the time, that was like, yeah. oh my god, it's three D. You know, like <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, it's a non-projectile game. You're just yeah. fighting with your hands and feet and stuff, so you can grapple more. Yeah. I remember the last one they had a. I think he was, I don't know if he was dead or living dead. I think he was a zombie. So let me know out there in the world. I could look it up right now, but I ain't going to. (laughs) But he was a zombie judo guy in the last virtual fighter. And I remember tried using him because I just like really got back into judo again when that game came out. And I was like, I'm going to use this judo guy. I'm going to do this, do that. He sucked. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I think the game design just is poor. You know, sometimes they just... A lot of times people design the character before they actually design the moveset, which I think is the wrong way about it. Like it should be the other way around. So <laughs> just imagine right, so like, this, little, this is why I assume yeah. this guy, this character they did was like, let's have a ballet judo person. And now they have to make the moves look like ballet judo, you know? So <laughs> it'd be beautiful. Uchi Mata and stuff. Also the guy just sweeping a <laughs> leg, like, like, like pure yet getting inside there. It'd be amazing come on let's do it but it is funny like i said so many guys that i know that have daughters that do judo they're like oh i'm gonna put her in ballet and judo she'd be amazing and this is what it's supposed to look like apparently <laughs> all right so so we're gonna move on now to the main topic of the show so anthony wanted to try out this new thing uh oh, wait, 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 no, we had the the listener question to go over first. oh the listener question okay so go yeah, ahead yeah. Anthony. so we had a comment on our last video uh Kind of not related to what we were talking about based last episode, but um, basically uh, t- asking about Kosen. I'm trying to summarize it. All right. We have an international judo tournament approaching in a couple months in my hometown. Question. They are adding a Nawaza division. Rules are pretty much exactly what you think to the tournament. As a guy who has zero Nawaza endurance, which I don't really understand what that means, but and doesn't like getting arm barred, do you think it would g- get good interest and participation? Have you been to any decent sized tournaments with a similar setup? I know there are only a few weight divisions in this one. And then this one, 81 kilos and 80. Wait, what? <laughs> Minus 81 plus it's light 80, middle. Yeah, but it basically looks like light middle and heavy. So and heavy. Um, yeah. I'm also hesitating as we don't have a novice division as guy in between 73 and 66. I'm in kind of crummy spot. So. Again, we we did talk about it in previous episodes. Uh, we had one episode talking about close and rule sets. Um, well, actually, we had a couple, right? Mm-hmm. Two of them. And then also, yeah. we had one where we talked about the USA Submission Grappling Tournament. And then we had another mm-hmm. one talking about the Las Vegas Coast and Judo Tournament, I believe. Um, but just to summarize, it really, de- how well it's run depend- depends on how it's run, um, who runs it and how well it is run, right? Because I think the largest one was definitely the submission grappling tournament because it was at USA Judo the big tournament venue versus most of the other Kosen Judo tournaments I've been to were at small local tournaments. And the first one I've been to was an afterthought. Literally the morning of at the coaches meeting, they're like, let's add a Kosen Judo tournament after this. Let's go around asking people who's interested in it. And they literally on the spot the morning <laughs> off just went around asking people who wants to join. And as far as I know, a few, like a, a good amount, but not a lot of people were interested, but because it was at the end and we all know how judo tournaments go, people already left at the end. Yeah. So yeah. So that's, it's, that's one. It's 5 PM, 6 PM. People yep. are tired. They just want to go home afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And a few other ones I went to, uh, based off the experiences of people I talked to that competed in it, basically it was better run than this one, um, but there were not enough participation, just like you said, because of the weight classes and everything. Um, there was not enough participation for it to be like, in my opinion, interesting because it's like a white belt fighting a black a black belt because they're roughly around the same division. And also the rules weren't super mm-hmm. clear, like what's legal, what's not illegal. Like referees weren't super familiar with the rules yet because it, it does take time you have to run a few more of these events for it to actually um catch on so um yeah if i think my my suggestion for this uh viewer was basically go especially if you don't want to get arm barred <laughs> like arm bar is like the last thing i'd be worried about right out of all the the submissions that <laughs> they can do on like if it's a judo based like nawaza tournament then yes arm bar is the only thing that can be done to you right and um that's arm dangerous yeah, but if it was a true submission grappling 
tournament, I would definitely be wor- more worried about heel hooks and neck cranks. And mm-hmm. uh, lately, I've been seeing some crazy crap going on in submission tournaments. That I'm not going to talk about here, but that I'm like, this is why I don't compete in those rule sets because I'm afraid to get paralyzed. Like my arm could get broken, but I'm afraid of getting paralyzed. So, um, <laughs> or getting hit, or getting elbowed in the head. But so, <laughs> but that did happen. <laughs> that did happen, and that's why I'm not going to do it again. But anyway. <laughs> Um, if you, I don't know what Nawaza endurance means, zero Nawaza endurance, because I feel like Nawaza, especially, I, I guess I kind of understand if getting pinned on your back is a loose, loose condition, I can see yourself having to explode out and get crushed by the judo pressure. Um, mm-hmm. then I understand Then maybe you should just try out and have fun, not expect to win. But, uh, otherwise if Game pin is not a problem, then I don't you can pretty much just chill and relax like in BJJ tournaments. So um that's my opinion. What do you what do you think? If this is that Las Vegas open national championship they've been trying to do for the past few years now, which we talked about before in the last uh mm-hmm. time we talked about coastal. Which is coming up again, by the way, for those who don't I, know. That's yeah. why I'm very suspicious that this is that tournament. Uh, which means I think we're actually yeah, talking about going international judo tournament. So I don't think there's that one. Have you seen the name of that tournament? The team that tournament has like 10,000 names with it. It's like the, uh, okay. Like the Sengoku, <laughs> Hayo, whatever, something ultimate fighting Kosen judo. Tur- <laughs> but um, that one's been going on for maybe two or three years now. Mm-hmm. And every time we watch videos of it, they still don't, I, I'm not giving them heat. I'm not, I don't want no heat from them. I'm not saying they're bad, but it seems like they're still working on a lot of the kinks. Yeah. Like we said last time we watched some videos of it, they had people got, they had people there with like, <laughs> like short, short geese and stuff. No, no sleeves. Oh, and it's stuff. the same it's tournament. Just, <laughs> oh, yeah. Wearing BJJ geese and stuff. They're supposed to be wearing a judo gi. And it's like, this stuff you got to enforce. If they don't have the right gi, then I'm the right gi. But that's just my opinion on mm-hmm. forcing rules. And if you're scared to do it, maybe go watch it first. So you get a look and then and then next year go into it. And if you're worried about your Nawaza endurance or just in your Nawaza period, maybe you should start working on more Nawaza stuff. And that's one thing about judo. Yeah. It should be 60, 40, 75, 25. Okay. We have Nawaza. Judo has great Nawaza, which one thing's like back to our Hollywood judo dojo again. Mm-hmm. The other thing that we do, we work on all of that. And I I'm know exce- a lot of- I'm the exception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Andy gets worked on getting beat up by everybody, yeah. which, oh man, we had a, I'm not going to get into it. I got this weekend, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so it, people forget about that. It, people only think about the Tachiwaza in judo and judo. We're very well-rounded. You know, we have great Tachiwaza. We have really good Nawaza. One thing I love about judo and Nawaza is that we're direct to the point, direct to a choke, direct to an arm bar, direct to a pin. That's something I like about it. And if you can't get something, you get stood back up. So if you're going to just do, just do Nawaza and you're not, and you're confident in Nawaza, don't go. Cause I don't want you to get hurt. I don't want you to yeah. tap too late. I don't want you to get choked out or something. Okay. I don't want you to get crushed so much that you're going to feel your spines getting broken. Your ribs are getting crushed. Yeah. Being nervous is one thing, but if you're going in scared already, then that's asking to get hurt. So yeah. Um, and that's when you're going to either hurt yourself or hurt somebody else because mm-hmm. you're nervous. So if you're nervous and going, just watch. And I have no problem with Kosen judo tournaments. I think they're, trying to help out judo and try to highlight and show the beauty of our Nawaza. Cause a lot of people don't get that. People don't get that. We, we, we've had so many people come to the dojo and be like, I didn't know you guys do groundwork or no, no, this is what they'll say. I didn't know you guys did BJJ. I thought it was just a judo club. It's like, that's one of the things we're talking about in our little thing later. BJJ came from judo. They're just all Nawaza. We're mixed. We're half touch. Well, one third, two thirds touch. You was Nawaza. We do both parts. Okay. And people don't understand that. People don't see that. Yeah. So a little, go ahead. one more thing, one more thing, which is funny. It's going to get me off. Right. <laughs> it may set me off right now. Last night at the UFC event, uh, there was, um, I didn't watch it. No spoilers, I, please. Okay. Well, one fighter, a guy like, uh, something Robocop and I like him cause his name's Rodriguez. Also, he's a great, he's a really good fighter and stuff. They talk 10 time Brazilian, not Brazilian state champion and Brazilian jiu-jitsu state champion stuff facing another guy that was like a, he was a national judo guy, I think, or he won like some national title in judo. And they're like, oh, he's just a judo player. It's always they blow people off their judo players. One, using striking, okay? Mm-hmm. But it's just one of the things like, they blow off, oh, he's not going to be able to do Nawaza with them. And he stood him up the entire time. I like, kept him standing up. So it's just a little side note there. It's how they blow off our Nawaza. So 
Yeah, but we got people it. forget. Like, it's funny because people meme about it a lot on Reddit. Um, but mm-hmm. like, striking is a way to generate Kazushi. <laughs> like, yeah, seriously. Like, I'm not even memeing. Right, it, it, it's like legit, right? Um, but that people forget about that. So, um, that judo does have a Temiwaza, and again, based off the context of this episode, yeah. So. Th- 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 uh, striking is in judo <laughs> traditionally, so the concept of using strikes to generate kazushi it's a, a real thing, um, even though it's not taught. But um, so, uh, I w- again, like I said, uh, like Juan said, just go watch. I would definitely read the rules beforehand to know what you're signing up for because I did not sign up for getting elbowed in the head, apparently. Um, <laughs> also, um, what, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, uh, if you this is really important. If you like the idea of this and you like what they're doing and you want them to do it more, just support it any way you can, whether that's signing up and participating, telling your friends about it, going and watch an event, buy a ticket, like just sharing it on social media, any, like anything you do, if you want them to host more of the, the stuff, then then support it the way you can. Cause that's the way that they're going to host more of these events and other people participate. So um, like personally, I think, like you said, I like what Kosen, the USGA is doing with the Kosen Judo stuff too. I just wish they wouldn't call it Kosen Judo because it's not. And I feel like they're misinterpreting uh, it. Because when, as someone who knows the rules to Kosen Judo, I'm just like, this isn't really Kosen Judo. So it's really confusing to me that um, you're doing calling Kosen Judo, but the rules aren't exactly Kosen Judo. Just like the USA Judo mm-hmm. submission grappling. When you tell me submission grappling, I'm thinking of like ADCC rules. And I, I'm mm-hmm. 99% sure that's not what they're doing at USA Judo, right? So mm-hmm. I think they need to come up with a name for it that's going to be more like, oh, n- you're saying this, so the rule sets have to be that. Like, it just pops up in your head that I understand mm-hmm. the rule sets. I know I know what I'm signing up for. I know what I'm going to go see, basically. Mm-hmm. Versus, like, going to submission grappling. You're like, this isn't submission grappling. You can't even touch the legs, or you can't do leg locks, or you can't do this, or you can't do that. So, um, yeah. That's the answer to the comment. So, yeah. So, hope that helps you out. I hope that you listen to our other episodes. We talk about this. You get a little bit more in depth. Like, this is just us giving little short blurbs about what we think about it. But, yeah. Uh, again, hope this helps you out. Look into it and watch old episodes. Like I said, mm-hmm. make, give you more insight. So, now you want to tell you our- which one, though, because you, <laughs> you have to watch all of them. <laughs> yes, you have to watch, read the descriptions for all of them. Watch all of them. Just like his wife asked you. <laughs> Once you do that, you can marry me. So. <laughs> oh, God. You guys are going to get in trouble now for polygamy now. All right. We're not in Utah. We're in sunny California where it's actually not raining this week. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's get to the main topic. So Anthony wanted to try something out. Um, so. We're gonna pick it. We're gonna go through these topics that are controversial judo topics. One of us is gonna be pro. One of us is gonna one of us is gonna talk about the pros. One of us talk about the cons. And we're just gonna have some fun trying this out. No matter how we both feel about it, we're gonna just mm-hmm. if whatever one we pick, that's what we have to do. Yeah. So just, just keep in mind, this is like kind of a, a how should I say this? I was kind of inspired by the trivia episode we had because we got a lot of positive feedback about that. Plus, mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you know this, but I got like bamboozled in high school and to join a debate team um <laughs> you love that word don't you yes. i feel like i should have a monocle on top of that <laughs> you bamboozled me <laughs> <laughs> no so um basically when i was in high school actually it's not high school it might be middle school there was a class called humanities where we were basically sitting there listening to music like really music that has influ- influence uh, society think about like beatles and they're like per- and like Jimi hendrix and all that stuff so we were listening to music and having discussions about it, how drugs at the time affected the society and culture and laws and politics and stuff like that so we were having this class mm-hmm. and i think one of the parents got wind that this was going on at school so they didn't like it mm-hmm. and overnight our humanities class that was discussing these kind of social issues um turned into a debate class and i freaking hated it (laughs) so (laughs) i actually had a dream the other night that was in that debate class but in a judo format so i was like oh that would be interesting for a podcast episode so um yeah so let so basically 
these what we're about to say is obviously for fun it's not necessarily going to be exactly our views so please don't send us death threats or um you're not the thoughts and views of yeah Anthony. we're just, we're just <laughs> It's like the debate, how sometimes you do, you just get a signed position that you, you don't agree with, but you still have to defend that position, all right? So um, how it's going to work is there's 10 topics. Uh, hopefully, we don't want this to last If we get long. through all 10 of them. If we get through all 10 of them. We um, might get, I don't know, we might make this a series. Let's do a few yeah. and let's see how long we get. We so, got 10 right here so far. Yeah, we got 10. Right. And I, I told Juan, I gave Juan the list beforehand. I came up with this list actually literally two hours ago during my Chinese New Year uh, thing. So um, I sent this list to Juan and um, he's going to, I gave him an option of picking the odds or evens. So he gets to pick the position and now I'll pick the position for the next one. And, and then the other person would have to pick um, the other, the other uh, one and defend it. So uh, I'll try to limit it to between like 10, five to 10 minutes, I guess, per topic. Uh, so uh, let's see how it goes. Maybe this will turn out terrible, but um yeah. So did, did you pick <laughs> odds or evens? Let's start with uh, that. Well, just like high school, I going to decide I was going to wing it and I didn't do the homework exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you pick right, odds so, or evens? I didn't pick any. I told you. No, no. Just pick odds or evens. Oh, like. God. Uh, uh, hold, hold on. That, that, that meme with the two buttons right now. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, which one do I pick? If you, know, if you don't pick, I'll pick one then. All right, I'll pick evens then. I'll pick evens. Okay, you pick evens. So f yeah. first one, first position is me, okay? All right. All right. So the first one is light grabs should come back to IJF tournaments. All right. Finally, we're talking about light grabs again after avoiding it for so long. Um, <laughs> so my position so you're is... Pro, so you're pro light grabs. No, I'm actually going to be... No, I'm con. I, I don't think light grabs should come back to IJF tournaments. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't think they should come back? So that means I'm pro leg wrap then. So so there's a okay. I'm not going to talk about what I actually the nuance and what I think. All right. <laughs> so, so I can leave you room to to talk about because there's my actual belief. If you listen to the past episodes, there's there's a caveat to that. But the the topic mm -hmm. is leg grab should come. If you ever done debate, then you should know how how the format goes. But leg grab should come back to the IJF tournaments. So I'll start off. I don't think light grabs should come back to IGF tournaments because the IGF is out to make money and ju make judo popular. And how to make judo popular is to have a lot of uh, good viewership for on TV, and that brings in sponsors. Sponsors mean more money in sports and means they can do more things to grow the sport. And light grabs, ever since light grabs have been banned, it has um, created more dynamic throws in judo. Versus a lot of the stalling and all that kind of stuff you see with leg grabs back then before leg grabs were banned. Okay. Do you have a counterpoint to that? If the Japanese don't like leg grabs, then they should learn how to defend leg. I'm joking. That's terrible meme. <laughs> you know that's from. <laughs> Do you know where that's from? Do you remember that meme? No, I, I don't. I don't know where that's you from. You remember that meme? Oh my God. That was like when leg grabs first got taken out, everybody was like, Putting this meme up that oh, the Japanese about, for it. There, there were, it was that whole myth about how the Japanese are afraid of wrestlers kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that one. So leg grabs should be put in because it makes judo more dynamic. Now, there's a lot of moves that we have in judo that when they're done properly, they're beautiful moves. And I understand how people get mad about the like uh, a pro, uh, not pro wrestling, but a wrestler's double leg. And I get that. I totally understand that. But if we make that, you have to only do judo double leg, judo single leg, judo one uh, one leg throwing stuff. That's great. Or a leg grab, like a pit, ankle pick into one of my favorite moves, Osotogari or Ochigari. Most people might argue with me and stuff right there, like to knock out Anthony. That's a beautiful move right there. And even if someone does, like I know I've taught some of my own students that are like, oh, well, sensei, if I did leg grabs, it would be easier. It would be more dynamic for me. I can have it because they grew up as a wrestler and stuff. And I show them, well, go ahead, grab my leg, grab it. And you put me right in the position right there from Uchimata. Go ahead, grab it. You put me right in position right there for Sumigeshi. So this whole thing of we take we take leg grabs out because, oh, they're just going to wrestle us down. If you know how to do judo properly and you know how to do good moves, you shouldn't be scared of leg grabs. And if you want to uh, take out things about leg grabs, then let's take out the power double. Let's do that. Let's just take that out. Be like if someone goes in for a mate immediately, like it should be and stand them back up no that's nothing right there you want to know you should get a hansoko make for attempting that move right there okay or at least a shiro for that 
All right. But don't give me that fight going for a good Moroto Gotti right there. Grab you, put you up in the air like you should be and drill you into the mat, putting you down. How's that not equal? That's a great judo move that Kano invented right there. Kano liked that move. He's in the, it's in the original book for a reason. It is a judo move. Okay. And I think it's this thing that IJF allowed all these lazy things of, yes, letting lazy wrestling moves get in there, lazy uh, Russian wrestlers, American wrestlers get in there doing bad double legs. And yes, they were double legs and single legs, just bringing in wrestling and allowing it. They should instead be like, okay, you want to do a, a leg grab? You have to do a judo leg grab technique. There are, there's, uh, I, I want to say off the top of my head, five major moves right there you can do from leg grabs that done properly in judo are beautiful moves. But if you do the wrestling version, like say I shoot in for a single leg on you, you sprawl out and they take your back. Okay. I, I can understand that. That's not a real wrestling. That's not a real judo move right there. Okay. You see how mate right there. Give me a shield for stalling and stand me back up. But if I grab your leg and I pick you up for a kata or um, what's the, yeah for not no not kata um t- um the high C uh, oh uh, uh, tegaruma for tegaruma yeah tegaruma is a legit move. If I'm lifting you up using that leg doing a legit judo move, I should not get in trouble for that. So that's just my take right there. I think judo should have been more strict on the oh, rules okay. enforcing real judo. But they're already having trouble. Well, this is my opinion, but they're already having trouble um, enforcing those rules. So uh, the rules that we have now, and th- th- don't you think this is going to create more like edge cases, exceptions, gray areas, and it's going to be hard to enforce the rules? They shouldn't be that hard because there should be black and white. If I'm shooting a power double from across the max, I'm losing. I'm, I got, I'm losing my one Rosati. 30 seconds of the mat. If I do a power double on you, a, a double leg tackle, we were going to call it in your, in your grappling style, a power morote, and I'm just shooting across and I'm not trying to pick you up. I'm just trying to take you down yeah. as a what back if people throw. are using that power double to push them off the mat to, to force a, a mate. And then like, that should be a shito. Keep doing that. Should be a shito. That should be a shito anyways. Should be a shito anyways. And this is up but to that- the refs. There are three refs on the mat. One in the middle and two on each side watching the monitors. It is up to them to do the rules correctly, to enforce the rules correctly. This is up to them. Well, well, technically now there's one ref up there that decides everything. Are you talking about God? God's a ref? That's, about, that's what God, they call him. Apparently, that, according God, to you the a, IJF ref we talked about, that's what they call him, God. Um, <laughs> yeah, but apparently there's one God, there? There's a one ref up there that basically overrides all the other refs now. And that was made clear in one of mm-hmm. the, the new rule changes. But um, is there another point you want to bring up before we move on? It's almost been five minutes, so I think it's been five minutes. So, um, that's just my point right there. Do you have a counter argument to that point? No, uh, I could, but I I don't. Again, I don't want this to go too far. And I think most people are familiar <laughs> with like graphs, so maybe we'll do it for the next next one, right? Uh, okay. Number all right, two. All right. So let me reset the time. Let us know how you guys like this so far. All right. Okay. All right. I'll reset the timer. Reset the so timer. second one. All right. Shodan, uh, sh- um, Shodan should be easier or harder to get in America. So would you, would you be in the easier camp or in the harder camp? Um, oh, God. <laughs> you go. You, which one do you want? Which, no, one, do you do you, want? which already, one do you feel more passionate you, about? You already. We already picked the format. It doesn't go like that. You, ha- you have to pick one. You're evens. I'm odd. So... <laughs> I'll pick that Shodan should be harder to get. Okay. Go I'll ahead. Sure go should be harder to get. Why not? Okay. All right. So in my opinion, in my opinion, in my humble opinion on my judo family out there, I believe that Shodan should be a little harder to get. We're not Taekwondo. All right. We're not McDojos. All right. We're not pay a thousand dollars, get your black belt academies. All right. We are judo. We're a traditional Japanese martial art that come from humble beginnings. Earning something makes it worth more to you. So if you make getting a black belt easier, aren't you going to make getting judo watered down? And we don't want that. We don't want to become McDojo's. We don't want to become like what Taekwondo has become with American type, American um, karate has become. And I will say it. There are a lot of dojos out there that make dojos that just give out black belts. You pay your thousand and here's your money. I understand some people don't like some of the hoops that you have to jump through to get your black belt, but that makes you earn it. Okay. Not everyone gets a black belt. I heard a great quote this past weekend from my friend, Brian, you know, they ask how many people or what's the average to get your black belt? How long does it take? What's the average of time? 
And the truth is the average person doesn't get their black belt and we want to keep it that way. All right. I understand that some people feel that they work so hard and we lose a lot of people because they quit at brown belt. Okay. And they go to other martial arts that might be quote unquote easier to get a black belt in, but we want to keep that the best of the best only get black belts in judo. That's why we put these things in front of people. We want them to, we want only the top of the crop to get this. Anthony. Uh, I think judo should be easier to get on um, judo should be the showdown should be easier to get in America because the standards are already really high, like um, compared to like Korea or Japan, like short, remember showdown is supposed to be first step beginner rank, whatever, however you want to translate it. Um, and I feel like in Japan and Korea, they kind of embody that already. And I mean, come on, like judo came from Japan. I think they, they know what a black belt means. So <laughs> I think they know what a showdown means. So it's coming from the country. Ah, that... no, no, I don't think they do. <laughs> <laughs> no, they need an American to tell them what a showdown is. Yeah. And also, yeah. So I think, I think they already know how, how, how it is. And people here just over inflate the rank of, of the black belt. Like, it, they see it as a mastery rank when it, sh it shouldn't be. And even in Japan, you need to be at least fourth degree and take a bunch of tests. And just like how we have to do now for uh, coaching, to even be allowed to be an instructor versus here, as soon as you're a black belt, it's like, oh, sensei. Like, I, I don't think that's, that's a healthy thing. And also belt obsessions are not healthy. I think America has this real, Western culture has this really unhealthy obsession with belts and I think you need to let people's skills um, speak for itself, whether it's skills in competition or skills as an instructor or just like overall their knowledge. Like, I think it, it, you need to let people speak for themselves in, in their um, in their own way. And the black belt, the first step rank should just denote that this guy knows the basics. He knows how to fall. He knows how to throw. He knows the etiquette. He knows what not to do. So you can see this guy come on with a black belt and just know he's not going to kill you or he's not going to forget to bow or something. Right. And just like when I went to Japan, I didn't ask people for what Don rank they are. I just kind of was like, this guy's good. That guy's good. This guy's good. And, uh, yeah. And that guy's do you bad. Ever, do you have a rebuttal <laughs> to that? Do I have a rebuttal for that? Um, I get what you're coming from about making the Shodan easier to get. But the thing is, like, we don't want to become how, like I said, how Taekwondo has become watered down and how American karate has been watered down that way. And we've seen it where, yeah, we do have a little bit of belt obsession where, like, you get this black belt, you feel like really earned and stuff. That's what you want from judo because we've had that problem. We had people that come from that did their two year military uh, service, came to America, and their black belt isn't as good as a brown belt here nowadays. Or sometimes I've seen not as good as a blue belt or someone that is a shodan and they're an adult and they have really good basic judo, but then I see them get beat up by brown belts and stuff. And I think it's a really let down when that happens. And I understand how it's an opening rank in there, but just the way that America was built and I'm gonna blame Chuck Norris for this. <laughs> He's the one I think made it the harder for, hardest for everybody. Cause if you know the whole story about Chuck Norris, when he went to do his first belt test in Korea, he failed. He failed spectacularly. He failed really badly. I always thought that was a small thing he failed on until I read his full until I read his full autobiography. He failed really badly and he felt that that made him want it more, that he deserved that he was going to work harder to get it. And he always kept that with him. So even when he went into full contact karate when he came to America, he brought that ethic, ethic, um, ethic, ethic, was that, that mindset etiquette, with him. Mindset, etiquette, yeah. yeah, with him. And I get that, you know, it's something you earn. You don't just get it. Not everyone is like that whole thing about trophies, you know, that whole thing where everyone gets a participation trophy. You don't get a participation trophy. If you're not best in the class, you don't win the championship. You shouldn't get that. That should drive you to work harder. And that's what I think about with the black belt. It should drive you to become a better judo player. Because there's many people where I've seen throughout the years from other dojos and stuff and other places that, yeah, they've been there a whole long time, but you know, they could stay a brown belt their entire life because they don't have that black belt stuff to them. And there are different criteria, you know, there's some of their competition black belts, some might be a kata black belt and stuff, but you have to earn it somehow. So that's just my thing with that. I feel that you're working harder for it makes you feel it, it makes you um really makes you feel it inside that you worked harder for it than just being given, all right, you know the basics, you know all 80 some throws and the water, blah, 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 blah uh, Nawaza techniques. Here's your black belt. And that is another thing in America. We do have this thing where 
if you get your black belt, you feel like you can teach, you know, you feel like I have my black belt, I can open up my own gym, my own Jojo and stuff. And we've had a, we've had a little thing with our own club. I'm not gonna say what, but I've noticed that a lot of these citrus colors think that because they got their green belt or got their blue belt, they think they can teach white belts and stuff. And it's like, I tell them, no, you can't. All right. You may know the technique, but you don't know the technique. All right. It's all right to help. That's each why other. it goes back to what I said about instructors being fourth mm -hmm. on and certified versus yeah. just a black belt. But yeah. So that's just my take on it. Yeah. I, I understand what you're saying, but karate and taekwondo both took their belt system from like the copy judo on the uniform no. and the belt system. Oh, how <laughs> dare you say that? Oh, oh my so God. They copied it. And I think you shouldn't, we should. They copied it from like the Japanese standards. So I, I don't think it's a big deal that we're like, oh, we're going to look like them because it's like they copied us. So you should just worry about your own sport and martial art versus others. <laughs> yeah, stay um, on martial arts, stay in your own lane. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, I know I said it's fat, it's easier to get in Japan, but I, I think people really think like, oh, I'm going to go to Japan and just like do jack shit and get my black belt. It, doesn't, it still <laughs> requires hard work. It's just it doesn't take like that as long as it takes and going through all these hoops and and there's a big deal when you get your black belt here like I, I just think it's a little bit different versus making it like taekwondo and karate which is quite a stretch um but yeah let's uh leave that one at that um so hey, number three, judo alive no mcdojos <laughs> <laughs> number three judo should be for a profit so i'm really conflicted in, in which stance to, to to put this one um let me clarify because there are for profit judos here. So when I say judo mm -hmm. should be for profit, I'm talking about the mindset, like the culture, because because there's so many people mm -hmm. right now that think judo should stay stay accessible and cheap and all stuff. So that's what I mean by judo should be for profit. I'm not saying that, oh, you're for profit judo, so you should like get the hell out of judo. No, I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm talking <laughs> about the, the, the culture, all right? So yeah, yeah. I think uh I'm trying. I'm trying to word it properly because I don't want to make this sound like I'm. I'm in in between both, which in reality I am. Um, I think judo should be for profit. That's my stance. Mm -hmm. okay? Um, okay. I think judo should be for profit in America because let's be honest, America is a very capitalistic driven economy and uh, culture. Let's just say that um, money talks. Just think about how. Our free speech is basically tied to how much money you have, um, how much political power and way you have in influencing decision has to do with money. Um, your status is depending depend on money. Like the money helps. Okay, money's not everything, but it definitely helps in growing a sport. <laughs> it helps in um, providing you with safe, clean facility with a lot of amenities that would help retain students it helps you hire instructors that can focus on developing the best curriculum and instruction instead of having to worry about their day job like for example right now i'm teaching a beginners class i'm trying to work a curriculum if this was my full-time job i would have been done months ago but i'm still only doing it on my free time so i'm still only like 25 percent of the way through the curriculum that i've been working on so that's why I think judo should be for a profit because it would be good for the growth of judo given the state it is right now in the U.S. That's it. Yeah, that's my. That well, I'm going to give you a chance to rebuttal to that point. All oh, right, you. All right, <clears throat> people of the judo community, judo needs to stay humble. Okay, we are a martial art for the people. Jigoro Kano invented judo for everybody. That was the whole point of him taking the moves from jujitsu, traditional Japanese jujitsu, and make and make it more safe to practice everybody. What is one of our main things in judo? You know, we get to walk away. We bow, we walk away, and that's the whole thing. We walk away because we're humble. All right. We're not in there for profit. We're in there to help as many people as we can. And one of the ways of doing that is keeping judo affordable for everyone. And I understand everybody's going to be like, oh, well, if we're so cheap, people think that we're cheap. Well, then they can go. If they want to go spend their money somewhere else, they can. I want people that want to become better people, learn a martial art that's affordable for everyone, that's open to everyone. That's my thing. As a martial artist, I'm proud to be humble and I want to help people. And this is one way that I can be humble helping people is by passing on my knowledge of martial art at an affordable price at Hollywood Judo for only $50 a month on paying $6. <laughs> <laughs> 
$60 a month, month to month, and $10 mat fee with Friday's open mat rondori for free. I open swear we're not doing this debate. <laughs> I didn't pick the question so that the advertiser dojo on it. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead Anthony go ahead <laughs> yeah it, that's true but time has changed like when Kano Kano was a min, uh, minister of uh, education and he intended to develop judo for physical activities and that's assuming that the government would support it and fund it we don't have that luxury here in America so you can help you can't help people if you can't even help yourself like judo is dying in America right now so how are you going to help people when nobody's practicing or teaching or has a structure to um, host tournaments, verify ranks and advertise for sport anymore. So it's, 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 you need a for-profit structure to keep it alive in judo, um, keep it alive in America. So that's, uh, I think that's the extent that I can actually support that. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, do you want me to come do, back? Do you have anything you want to add to that? Uh, <laughs> I think that was a terrible question to pick. Why to pick that? <laughs> no, on to the next one. That was fun. That was fun. Right. <laughs> okay. Number four. <laughs> Number four. Form, well, but, by the way, if you've been listening to our podcast episodes, all of them, you, you pretty much know where our stance and nuance, uh, nuances to these uh, points stand. But this is kind of fun. So <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> yep. Number four. Warm ups and conditioning, the way that most places do it right now, are important and should not go away. I'll be pro because I know you are super con about this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, 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 help I you can, out there. This is, I can I'm help you out. This. I was actually on the drive back. I was ready to support this. Oh, were you? Because <laughs> yeah, you were but... like so anti warm up. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm going to get to start off this one. Um, ladies, gentlemen, countrymen, people of the land. <laughs> no. All right. So why warmths are important for judo? Now, I understand for some people that are younger and for children, warmths aren't super important. It's more about just get them bodies moving so they can just get limbered up a little bit. But as you get older, you need warm ups. Right. The reason why is because you need to get your body warmed up as the older you get. And some people forget about that. They just want to get on the mat and start throwing each other and start just going straight into Nawaza. And in my opinion, that's when you get hurt the most because your body's not limber enough. And I understand some people want to do some new things of like, well, we'll do warm ups by doing each We want to do warm ups by doing some light randori. And it never stays that way. You, you want to say, let's go light. It never stays light. That's just how it is. All right. So that's why I think when you do a structural warm up with like a little bit of running, some calisthenics, light stretching and stuff, and then doing some more interesting, interesting things like I like to do is I do things that's a little bit of yoga in there, a little bit of stuff from wrestling stuff. That's something you'll warm to do push ups and sit ups in dynamic ways. Because I know if I just tell people just do 10 push ups or 10 sit ups, it's just this is boring. But the way I think of it is that most people aren't doing this on their own at home. The only time they're doing 10 push ups is when they're coming to class. The only time they're doing 10 sit ups is when they're in class. So, if I make them do it in the warm ups in a dynamic way, it's getting their bodies warmed up and getting their bodies a little bit more toned, a little bit more better to do judo. And that's one of the things about judo. We move a lot, we get slammed on the mat. And that's why I think warming up helps you out for that. One of the best ways to warm up, in my opinion, is to do things as a, as a team with one other person. Falling over some, falling over someone, rolling over somebody, have them roll over you, warms up your body to get falling into judo more acclimated, to get you more acclimated to falling that way. So I don't think you should take out warm ups. I understand some people get tired of them, like oh I can do this at home, but let's face the facts, people. Most people ain't doing this at home. They're coming to judo to get their workout in. And if I can have them do a little bit of warmth and I help them build their muscles a little bit, at least judo muscles by picking each other up to do some crawls and stuff, people on their back do a little bit of running with that, that's going to help you out just a little bit more than not doing warm ups, having you be a little stiff, taking a fall hard. The first thing you do and you hurt yourself during your neck's not warmed up yet, because I know how we get when we get older. Our knees hurt, our necks hurt, our backs hurt a little bit and warming up, rolling that out really helps us out. So when you're young, I get it. But trust me, this is going to be something for you later in life that's going to build this into you. So when you get older, you know what to do. Okay. <clears throat> so I think if you really... How, how should I start with this? Ha -ha, I, have that one. I, I, should have take, I should have taken notes on what you said because I forgot the first <laughs> point you said. But um, ah. uh, warm-ups 
most dojos only have class for an hour due to like they only have t- class twice a week on average and only for an hour. They spend on average 10 to 15 minutes on warm up. That's half an hour that you spent doing push up setups, stuff that's not related to judo. People pay money and sign up to go to judo class to learn judo, not to do all this conditioning stuff. And you're wasting a lot of time. Like if you listen to my the last episode about crossing off the days that you have left alive in your judo career, <laughs> that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of time you're wasting. Literally, like not doing judo. If you want to do the stuff, you can do it at home. And judo, you have an instructor there to help you correct you stuff that you can't. For example, you can practice uchikomi at home, but then you don't have an instructor there correcting you. You don't need an instructor to correct you doing push up push ups for the most part. You should focus the time in class to utilize the resources you have there, which is the tatami, the sensei, and a partner. Things that you usually don't have at home. So I think it's a huge waste of time to do those warm ups. If you really do need a warm up, <clears throat> then I think it's better for you to for the instructor to say like, okay, if you really need a warm up, you can take the first ten minutes of class warming up, or show up to class earlier warm up. Um, just like how now some people show up to class late and they, they're allowed to give have their time to do their own little warm up beforehand, it can work the same way. Um, I'm not going to go into detail because we already did a whole episode on this. So refer back to the warm up episode if you want to hear that. But do you have a rebuttal to that? <laughs> Warm-ups are a preventative measure to make sure you do not get hurt in judo. For me, when you start doing when you're young, they build the they build the knowledge of doing this regularly so you don't hurt yourself. You stay flexible, you stay limber your entire life, you're not going to get that hurt. Where if you don't stay limber, you don't stay flexible, that's when you get hurt because you'd be too stiff. So that's for me, that's where warm-ups come into play because as you get older, you're going to need this. So it is a preventative measure for any injury. You need to warm up and warm up properly, whether it's a little bit of a jog, some jumping around, some light stretching, just something to warm your body up because doing judo and any combat sport is a hard impact. And going from walking in the streets to getting thrown directly at a Tommy is gonna be a real back adjustment when it's done wrong. Okay, yeah, so let's leave it at that. I just realized we we don't actually have 10 questions. I only wrote down, I, I missed number five. So we only really have nine <laughs> questions, but it's oh, fine. Oh, sure. you do have number, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we only have nine questions, but let me fix the numbers here so I don't say it wrong. <laughs> okay. Okay, number five. Hata is useless and should not be required for black belt, for black belts or whatever rank, ranked test, okay? Uh... I, I mean, I, I don't know what your position is because I, I remember you think you saying it's important at the same time you're also saying you hate it. So um, <laughs> I, have never, a, I have a very love hate relationship with judo kata. I want to say I mean it, I don't know what part's going to be, but I do appreciate it more. And I'll explain whether which way I go on it. I will explain more that I find judo kata much more. Um, um, what do you say? How, how do I word it? More useful. Then karate and taekwondo kata. Okay, I'm just gonna say that. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna. I'll. I'll. I'll just pick that. I'll pick the position that kata is useless. Then, so you can elaborate yeah. on that. All right. Um, kata is useless, not because of uh, it being actually useless. It's an outdated tool. I'll, I'll just say it's outdated. It's, there's no reason to do it anymore. For example, if you let's say that the Nagino Kata, the first set, right, is like all hand throws, just practice the whole the practice the throws. Like we already have we don't need the kata for um recording the the thing to pass it down because we didn't have videotape back then or whatever, low quality videotaping and pictures. We have videos now. So I don't think kata is useful in that aspect. If you're gonna use it to practice um all the throws and you might as well just practice the throw themselves. Plus it, it, it kind of like adds all these useless things in the middle, like how to bow, how to step onto the mat, when to turn around. Those have nothing to do with how good uh, has nothing to do with judo. Like it, it's a complete waste of time. It should not be required for black belt. So that's it. Oh, you want me? I sure. can keep going. Like <laughs> I, I just want to make, 
Okay. Sure? So I'll, I'll make another right. point. Um, All right. It should not be. It should not be required for black belt. If you go back to what I said about limited time to train, I rather spend this time drilling those techniques and trying to memorize the pattern and the order and all those minor details that aren't going to be how you do actually do the throw in itself. And also like the kata, think about it. What, what's one of the most popular throws that you see in judo? Also Tagati, Ochigari, Kochigari. Those aren't in the kata. So they if they're gonna keep kata around, they need to update it really to make it more relevant for, for the modern people. Um yeah, go ahead. <laughs> judo kata twenty twenty three. <laughs> well they, they did do the, the kodomoro kata though but yeah go ahead the reboot the next generation <laughs> all right so i'm pro kata so all right so <clears throat> oh shit they're not my shit over right now <laughs> i'm gonna do the praying hands for this one fellow judo players i personally have a love hate relation with kata as some of you may or may not know, I grew up doing Taekwondo and Tangsudo Karate. Growing up, I hated Kata. I'm going to admit it because we didn't practice Kata a whole lot. And most of the time in Karate, Taekwondo, the Katas for the most part are the same, but sometimes they become different. And you're just doing these moves back and forth by yourself in a T-shape or an I-shape motion. Sometimes there's some crosses in between, but they never really tell you what the moves are for. You're just told to do reverse punch front kick, the high block reverse punch front kick. They don't tell you, well, this is someone's attacking you from a high block. So you're blocking that hit and then coming in reverse punch. You're just told to go in there, do this, do that, do high block, do knife hands, do all this stuff. And they're not telling you exactly, unless you ask what these things are for. Now, my love hate with judo kata is that I've grew up hating kata. So I'm not a big fan of it, but I will say this, judo kata, when you're done with the partner, when it's supposed to be done, you're doing it with somebody. I know why I'm doing these moves. I can see where the kata is coming from, why I'm supposed to be doing this. It shows me balance, how to step correctly. Uh, also, the reason why we get on the um, tatami and bow is just simple judo etiquette. Do you know judo etiquette? I know we tell our students that, but if they want to get their black belt, they better know it. And if you want to get judo etiquette down, do kata, how to step on the mat correctly, why we sit in seiza, how we sit up in seiza, how it's all based off of samurai styles, how a samurai sits down, how a samurai would pull his sword up first and how they draw first. And that's how we step. How in the later katas, our hand is a sword that we're blocking coming in with somebody teaches balance and these attacks. And these are moves that you're going to need to know to teach people. That's why you need to know at least the basic moves for Nagano Kata to show me that you know all the basic moves. So that's why to me, I have a love-hate relationship with Kata. I know that. And that's why I teach Kata, because I hate it. And I want people to get good at it, to let them know the basics. I cannot just be like, show me these many moves. Some people don't know that. It depends on your gym. It depends on how you're trained. But one thing we can all agree on is that we all know Nagi no Kata at least to get our first dawn. And depending on where you're at, you have to know the entire Nagi no Kata to get your second dawn before you go on to doing the Newaza Kata for either your second or third dawn to show that you know the basics Newaza techniques, which even adds the Ashi, the, um, ashi Gatames, the leg locks, which are lost moves in Judo. We're not allowed to do them in practice no more. Well, we are, depending on where you train at, but we're not allowed to do it in competition. So I know a lot of dojos toss them out. They're like, oh, we don't need to leave these leg locks and stuff. We're not doing a competition. Let's toss them out. But it forces you to learn it as a higher you go. And the higher the, the techniques get for the katas, you have to learn new things. Even if you get the higher ones, where it's, it does get weird, I will admit to it, we have to learn the knife defense, the sword defense, and the gun defense. Which is always a joke is that these gun defenses, what are these for a lock load pistol? I got to open the thing up, put some powder inside there, jam it. So the guy's waiting to shoot me. I get it. These things are weird, but they teach balance in the beginning. They teach you formalities and it creates a level that we all have to be at. Hopefully all be at as we get our higher ranks in our belts. So that's why for me, we need to keep Kata in there. And I agree that maybe we could change Kata up a little bit. But we need to have kata in there because it gives us formality for everyone 
to have an even playing field to have your belts. Anthony? Okay. If it's so important, then why don't they teach them teach that in the first day one or even the first year of your judo career? Most people see it as an afterthought. It's like here, Nagino Kata, you're you're about to get your black belt. You're about to get your brown belt. You better start studying the kata. <laughs> like and then you study it, you do it, and then you never do it again. So I think people overstate the importance of kata because if it's really that important, they should have been learning that a long time ago. And I know some dojos actually do this, is that they teach it um to to people throughout well, maybe not as a white belt, but they start teaching them early and have a lot of focus on it and um, but still, like, if it's really that important, how are these, and if it's that useful and effective, then we have all these people that are Olympic medalists or like national competitors, high level competitors are really good at judo and they never did kata other than for their test. Cause I think there's other ways of doing it. So, um, man, that was hard to say with a straight face. <laughs> 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 hey, look at me! I'm trying to stay with a straight face right here, trying to stay calm and stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah, I did, uh, to help out Anthony right there. Yes, a yeah. lot of dojos, like some dojos that are kata dojos, will start having you start doing your nagino kata when you get your brown belt. Like as soon as you get your brown belt, they start you having to do like the first set, and the second set, and third set. No, some will test you for the first set for your first for your um third cue and then second cue you have to learn like the first three then like your first cue mm -hmm. you have to know like all of them or something so that you, when you get to your black belt you know all of them you're not having like crash course to get in there <laughs> you know like what we do sometimes <laughs> <laughs> all right um okay so uh, uh, i don't do you have anything else to respond to that i feel like that's pretty straightforward ah, so, so, so all right. right there all right, number six there should only be one national governing body in America. In America. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm pro one governing body then. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Oh my God. How am I going to, how am I going to argue this one? I'm going to explain this one. <clears throat> I wish I could stand up and like walk around and be like, <laughs> people, you want to be we, a politician, we. do you? Like, <laughs> you just apply for an acting job to be a I'm politician. I'm an actor. I'm an actor. I was somewhat part of the debate team in school. And I remember I learned um, the hand stuff, the hand movements, because yep. I look, because this is going to age me. Like, I watched a lot of Bill Clinton when I was younger for debate and stuff. And he always did the thumb and the hands. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that. Then my friends one time during class mocked me with that doing my hands. So I did it back to him and stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then I, I remembered the, I learned the, the pen from Bob Dole. Bob Dole always had a pen. Bob Dole. If you guys remember Bob Dole. <laughs> That's what you're going to get remembered for. I know. <laughs> I'm going to do this. All right. So <clears throat> right now in the USA, we have three governing bodies in judo. We have USJF, USJA, and USA Judo. We are one of the only countries and few countries, if any, that have three governing well, bodies. There's, there's actually a few more than that, but yeah, I get your point. Go ahead. Yeah, this guy's interrupting me. See this right here? Moderator, please, please, moderator. Can you, my time, please. Can I, can I speak? Can I sleep? Can I, can I talk, please? Can I talk? Can I talk? All right, that's my time. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have three major governing bodies. I know there are more. I know people are going to come at me and stuff. Like, what about this one? What about that one? And that's the problem. The problem is that some people get upset about if USJA tells me no, USJF will tell me yes. US, USA Judo says yes, but USJA and USJF both say no. Why do we need so many governing bodies? Because someone told you no. So I have to start, I have just start my own federation. Why not? Okay. Very few other countries have multiple federations. Most countries only have one. And here in the U.S., I know USJF is one of the oldest ones, and the, I believe it is the oldest one. But do they talk to the IGF? Does the IGF talk to them? No, they only talk to USA Judo because USA Judo is in charge of the U.S. Judo team, which goes internationally. And that's what matters. I know some people might get mad about, well, I want to do this and they won't sanction it. Well, I'm sorry, then they're not going to do it. But we have too many pots in the kitchen, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, too many chefs in the kitchen. No, no, there's too many pots in this hot on this hot plate right here. I bet. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you're breaking me up here, moderator. Please, please, my time, moderator. <laughs> Can I finish, please? 
having too many federations, I feel sometimes waters down certain things. I know they all agree upon a lot of stuff, but if they agree on so many things, why can't they just be one? Why do they always have to separate themselves? Why do we have USJ, USJF Winter Nationals, USJF, USJA Summer Nationals, USA Nationals? Why do we need all these separate things? I get that we need more tournaments. I appreciate that. But why do we need so many other federations to say what's good and what's not good? What's allowed and what's not allowed? We don't need this all jumping back and forth one to another. Having one federation make everything easier and understandable. That we all have the same criteria. We all have the same curriculum that we're all teaching. I know we're all not going to teach this, but at least we'll be all on the same level again. So one federation, in my opinion, would make things much easier and helpful for the United States judo. Helpfully, it would grow judo. And I also definitely make things easier at your federations with your dojos. Because I know many dojos have people from USJA dojo, USJF dojo, USA judo under one banner. So let's bring it all together and create one judo federation, bring it back all together and stuff. And let's work together to create one cohesive unit of judo in the United States. Thank you. That's my time. That that literally <laughs> sound sounded like <laughs> that was really legit. I, I'm, I'm like, what am I going to say to this? Like, <laughs> um, no, I'm not even kidding. Like, seriously, that, I, I'm like, how am I going to counter this? Um, I thought this <laughs> was going to be in the back <laughs> easy. Um, yeah, I know you're rallying around people to join under one um organization, and you're heavily implying or even straight out saying that they should join under you just. There should just be USA Judo, but USJA and USJF all does a lot of things that, and especially at the local level, um, that the USA Judo w- would not do for you because they only care about the Olympic sponsorships and all that kind of stuff at the high level. Growing Judo as a sport, producing Olympic level athletes, while USJA and USJF they actually try and help the. I can't even say this is right. <laughs> they're, trying, they're hosting moderator, things. please moderator please please moderator please <laughs> they really do things for the local community that um are helping the judo at the grassroots level at the local level everything from processing ranks to hosting clinics to running local tournaments when was the last time usa judo ran a tournament in like idaho or something like I, I, don't I, I don't know why I said Idaho, but you, you get what I mean. Like <laughs> they host their their tournaments in like the same few big cities, and everyone has to go fly there. But USJA sanctions our our inter dojo tournament. They they sanction all these other little small events. They're hosting Kosen judo tournaments. Um, I don't know what USJF does, but um, there there's all these things that USA judo would probably not do or think is not worth their time. That these other organizations would do so beyond that um some of these organizations has a let's just say checkered controversial past and which was what spawned these other organizations right because these people had a mass exodus and formed their own own thing so it's good to have multiple organizations in case they're it's, there's competition and it prevents pe- people from just having a monopoly over the whole thing and thinking they can do whatever the hell they want, even though some of them kind of do now still, but, um, but you get my point, right? If one organization doesn't do the right thing, they have to be worried about their members leaving for this other organization. So there's a little competition between the three organizations to kind of like keep check and balance and to keep other in place because there's always going to be another one there to replace them. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's good. Do you have, do you have anything else for that? Uh, nah, nah, that's good enough. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's <laughs> national governing body. All right. Um. Okay. Next one. Kosen judo and Nawaza only tournaments are a good idea in America, obviously, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're not in America, just say in, in general. They're they're a good idea anywhere. So this is me, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm just going to say cross, like, trying oh. to like, bless yourself, please, God, let me go to a good one this time, please. Please, God, help me out with this. <laughs> I want to say it's a, it's a bad idea. I'm going to say a bad it's a idea? bad idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a bad idea. All right. So let's be honest. They're just trying to court BJJ people. And BJJ people are just interested in BJJ. They're not interested in judo. You're, unless you try and make this like a BJJ like tournament, then you're at that point, you're not close in judo and it was a judo tournament. You're just a BJJ tournament at that point, hosted by a US, uh, by a judo organization. Also, judo is already not popular enough in this country in terms of competitors. Like people just in general don't like to compete. So you should really focus your resources on improving your current rule set instead of like, dividing up your resources into hosting these other things um, that might or might not see or see a good return on your investment. Um, you should really focus on running your current events better because honestly, they're being terribly run at the time. At, at, at the current time, they're being run poorly, basically. You should really improve your own product before you even consider expanding the product and services. So... Um, yeah, dude. I'll start with that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> My fellow new wazis out there. I think we need to have more. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. you gotta coin that term, okay? <laughs> new wazis. <laughs> Watch next week to be on a shirt on on uh, on uh, Etsy oh, or something. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <sighs> My fellow Nawazis out there, we need to promote judo. We need to show the world, the rest of the United States at least, that judo has good Nawaza. That we have proper groundwork, that we are not just tachiwaza, that we are not just the beautiful throwing art, that we are also the beautiful groundwork art. Showing these, having these tournaments, these old school Kosen Judo tournaments, showing our Nawaza shows people that we have more out there than just tachiwaza. How many people has got, how many people have you had come to your dojo saying Judo has groundwork? Oh, I saw you guys were doing this BJJ out there. Do you guys do BJJ before class or something? No, we are doing they wasn't. That's when we need to show people. When you watch judo, yes, I know everyone wants to see our beautiful throws. Everyone wants to see that beautiful Uchimata, that beautiful Tayatoshi. I know everyone wants to see that. But what happens if you get only Wazari? You have to go to Nawaza. You have to throw into a pin or into submission. So let's have a tournament just showing our pins, our submissions. There's nothing wrong with that. And I know people are going to say, oh, you're just catering to the BGJ community. No, because we're doing judo rules. And it's something that I've always said to my other martial art friends out there from different grappling arts. We're all grapplers. The only difference is the rule sets we fight under. So yes, BGJ people can come, but it's just enforcing the rules, which I know some people say is hard. I understand it might be hard because people aren't used to it, but that's what happens. A little bit of growth is going to cost a little bit of pain. So let's have some more Nawaza tournaments to show people what we can do. And yes, let's have Nawaza tournaments. Arm bars, chokes, pins, the three basic moves in Nawaza that we all need. We don't need foot locks and stuff. I'm not telling you to bring back that kind of stuff. I'm not saying let's do some crazy gi chokes either, unless you're doing one of the traditional ones. But let's show people that we have this Nawaza techniques. The beautiful thing about judo is that it is straight and direct to the point with our Nawaza. That's one of the things that I love about judo, that brought me to judo, was direct point in our Nawaza. Where I know BJJ friends of mine, I did BJJ in a while. It's all about that waiting for the right moment. You hold there, you try this, you try that. It's, they always call it that chess match. The thing I love about judo, because I came from wrestling, is that it's quick and fast. We have four minutes to work. We don't have all day, all right? So our stuff is quick and fast to the point, which I think people would like more personally than just laying on the mat all day, waiting for something to happen, waiting for the right moment. We don't have 20, 30 minutes to be laying on the mat waiting for that right choke. I have to get the screws in on somebody for the choke. I have to get my knee in the side a little bit to get the arm bar as fast as possible, efficient as possible. One of our judo points are as efficient as possible. Was it maximum F? Was it minimum effort, maximum efficiency? That is exactly where our Nawaza is. 
And we need to show that to the world by having more Nawaza tournaments with the Kosen Judo. So please help me promote Nawaza Judo. Help me promote <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> with more Kosen Judo tournaments. And you can also come to Hollywood Judo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that it? All right. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's so it. my rebuttal is that Again, you're just court. I just think you're still just courting BJJ enthusiasts. Like, I've trained enough BJJ to, to realize it's really hard to break the habit of not turtling. And we've seen um, other people come from BJJ to judo tournaments and do the BJJ, they, they do BJJ stuff in the judo tournament. So, again, I think if people just want to do judo, they're going to do a judo tournament. If people want to do Nawaza, they're going to do a BJJ tournament. I really don't think there's a market for Kosen Judo and Nawaza Judo to grow in. You're, you're basically fighting over the time and attention and money of the BJJ crowd, which is already well established and they have a strong hold of that market. We should really attract more people into the Judo rule sets. In fact, if you get people to do this Nawaza stuff and they're like, oh, this is pretty easy or this I, I like this a lot, then they might actually go leave judo and go do BJJ instead. They might meet these people at BJJ tournaments and they're like, you know what? You you were pretty good at the groundwork. You should come check out my BJJ club sometime. And then they're going to go go leave for BJJ. We already have people leaving judo for BJJ for various reasons. We don't need to give them another reason to leave. Is that, oh, I want to do well in Nawaza, and I just noticed how bad my Nawaza it was at the Nawaza tournament. So I'm going to go do BJJ. I, I don't really mean that. But. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean this at all. <laughs> oh I don't mean this. <laughs> well, but there, there is some truth in right. that when why I said that. But yeah, I know. I know. I, I'm gonna. I got. I got a good one for this. I got a good one for this. All right. <clears throat> I hear what you're saying and I get where you're coming from. You're scared of losing judo players to BJJ. If we lose a few players to BJJ, it is what it is. It goes back to my point about us being more affordable. If someone wants to spend $200 to go do BJJ, let them. But if they want to stick with judo and find growth in a well-rounded martial art where you learn Tachi Waza, you learn how to defend yourself standing into Ne Waza, all we're doing is showing people that are interested in doing Nawaza how well-rounded judo really is. How we are supposed to be 60-40, 75-25, depending on how you want to fight. Yes, we do focus on standing, but we have fantastic Nawaza, fantastic groundwork that we can teach people and show people that people do not get to see in high-level competition. Sometimes they do. I will, I will admit, sometimes they do, but they don't a lot because we have these beautiful throws. So we get a lot of people that just want to do Nawaza work, yes. But I feel that like we can give them more by teaching them Tachiwaza with Nawaza. And I feel doing Coast and Geo tournaments to show off our Nawaza will help people come with us. Showing of how rounded martial art that we are. How rounded of a grappling martial art we are. And that's just my part right there. All right. So number eight. <laughs> uh, okay. Number eight. You should pass a background check for in order to receive your show done. Uh, now, I I don't think some people will say that's not very controversial, but you'd be surprised. I like I've talked to a lot of people that were so surprised that we need a background check for it because in BJJ you don't really need that, <laughs> and also mm -hmm. you don't even need that to open the school, honestly. So um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot of people were surprised and they thought it was ridiculous, and I I'm, I'm honestly I was surprised that they're surprised, but <laughs> that they thought it was ridiculous. Yes, yeah. I know it's it's um it's like it's one of the things where you first look at it just like um. You talk, look at a top player, you're like, oh, that's crazy. But once you dive deep into it and look into it deeper, you're like, no, that actually makes a lot of sense once you look into it. But which, which side do you want to debate? You're, this is yours. Oh, this is my debate? Um, yeah. So I'll debate. Oof. I'll debate. I'll be mean. I'm going to debate pro. <laughs> <laughs> pro what? Pro uh, pro you should get a background check? Yeah, pro background check. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> <laughs> you got to get into character each time. <clears throat> Fellow judo instructors, I know people are upset about getting background checks. 
I know some people get mad about having to get a background check for judo to get their black belt because we are one of the only martial arts that requires you to get a background check to get your black belt. But I put this to you first. We are an Olympic sport. We come from a higher standard than most other martial arts. I know they have Taekwondo now. I know they have Taekwondo. I know they have Karate now. And I'm not sure how their system goes for them in the, <laughs> it's going to be funny, that the WTF. I'm not sure how they do it in the, in, the world, in the World Karate Federation either, how they do their stuff. But I know in Judo, we hold ourselves to higher standards. And I know some of you are scared out there that if I force my players, my brown belt to get a background check and he doesn't want to, he might leave. And he might go to BJJ. He might go to MMA grappling class instead. But we are a higher standard because we are an Olympic sport. And because we're an Olympic sport, we have to protect ourselves and protect our players. We all take safe sport. We all take heads up. Why? To protect people. And one of the one things to protect somebody is to know someone's past. And I know some of us might have checkered past. We might have things that we're not proud of. But I'm sorry, if you can't pass it, then I'm sorry you can't be a black belt. It's, it's not up to me. It's up to the system in a total for all of us to protect people. And I know people are thinking, well, it, this is just to protect kids. No, it's to protect children, adults, men, as well as women. Because there are people that fell through the cracks. And we all know the stories that we've heard in the past of someone being abused, touched inappropriately. And stories about people that leave one state to another state to go teach martial arts, but they never got a background check. Where if you did a simple, simple background check on somebody, you would see that they have something in their past that they shouldn't be teaching around children or even adults, men as well as women. And I know maybe weird people, what do you mean men? We are grapplers. What is our point? We control people's bodies and we're in doing they waza with somebody. We've all seen those weird black belts, those old guys that take advantage of people. You always, we have to stop it. And I have a thing with doing the background check provides at least a first barrier to protecting people. So yeah, it might be weird. You might lose a couple of players and stuff that way, but that's it. If they have to go, they have to go. And if they're happy being a brown belt the rest of life, thank you. I appreciate that because you are making the system better by accepting this background check. So please explain this to your players. I know it's weird, but we are held to a higher standard because of that. And we're not just protecting ourselves, we're protecting young, old, everyone with a simple background check. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so it's kind of ridiculous that you need a background check to get your show done because uh -huh. just I just want to get a black belt. It doesn't mean I want to teach, right? The whole point is their 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 um uh justification for this requirement is if you get your show done, you're technically allowed to teach and be around kids and start your own club. That's why we require the background check. And background checks does not really stop all of that stuff. Some people may have had a, a drug history or um they've had some random trouble with the law or they did something dumb as a kid and now they have a background that's preventing them from contributing to the sport potentially. I mean, look at BJJ, they don't really require a background check and look at how popular they are. And um, I think it's, it's really up to the due diligence of whoever signing up to really look up the instructors and pay attention to how to teach and not just leave their kid there unattended, unattended by themselves and, with the instructor. If you're afraid of that, you shouldn't allow, allow that to happen to anyone, even with a background check. So I think the background checks just putting up a barrier to a lot of people that really want to give back to judo or t ha have judo help their own lives. But um, they, they can't do that because of this background check, putting a barrier to it. And Background checks, like I already said, doesn't really stop everything. Look at all the stuff that has happened in USA Judo's history in the past to Kayla Harrison or um, look at USA Gymnastics. I'm sure they require a background check too. Like those things happen. So I, I feel like the background check, like you said, is only like, do we actually have some statistics on how how much it's actually stopping this kind of stuff from happening? Um, I think if 
if they want to make it a requirement to start your own school, your own club, sure. But I don't think it should be a, a requirement to get your black belt in uh, the background check. It's two, to, two totally separate things. You have black belts that never teach after getting the black belt. So why do they need a background check? And how else would I defend this point? <laughs> like, <laughs> You definitely gave me the hard one, I think. Here. Is that, is it, yeah, oh, yeah, I did. Is that your time, sir? Is that your yeah, time? Yeah, do you have a rebuttal? Uh, I, 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 have, I, yeah. I have a super rebuttal. I have some fun rebuttal. Yeah. <clears throat> I hear what you're saying about, well, I want to get my black belt. I have something I did in my past. It's going to prevent me if I get a background check. I'm sorry about that happening to you. But you might say now that I don't want to teach, but later in life, you might want to. And you might say, well, I might get a background check later if I want to teach. There is nothing here in the United States where we are that prevents me from having you teach. If you have a black belt in here in the United States, you can open up a gym almost anywhere. Now, if you want to be a certified coach through USA Judo, USJF, USJA, you have to get an actual coaching license. But there's nothing me stopping from you, from me giving your black belt now and moving to the next town, next city over and opening up your own place in a gym, doing some work outside your own, outside your own garage or working outside of a community center, which I hope would background check you, but some might not, or you might join a gym and be like, Hey, yeah, I have a black bone judo. And they might, Hey, you want to start teaching classes? There is nothing unless they do their own check on you to stop you from teaching. If you have a black belt, and that's the one thing in America, once you have a black belt, they assume that you're good enough to teach anywhere. So at least it puts a barrier right there to stop certain people from at first. And this is just the first barrier, okay? And if you did do something when you were younger, okay? When you're a little bit older or something, whatever you did something, if it wasn't that bad, you can always get it expunged off your record. And when it gets expunged off your record, the court says, hey, this person has changed. Their thing was the thing was done. They've paid their restitution. They can go into society normally again, that they wouldn't, if they get a background check, it will come up clean. So if you've done something and you cannot get expunged, I'm sorry, you cannot get a black belt from me. You cannot get a black belt from judo. You will stay a brown belt. And I'm sorry if I lose you to another martial art, but at least it's the first step to me perfect protecting other people is the first step. And if someone else sees something, I hope they say something, but that's a totally different topic. And that is it. It is just the first to defend people because there is nothing stopping me from you teaching. Once you got your black belt, there is nothing stopping me from teaching right now as a brown belt. So at least to be a certified judo instructor in the United States, you have to pass a simple background check. That's it. Ha ha, how do you like that? <laughs> I, I honestly, I mean, I kind of agree with you, but um, I honestly, again, don't really care about belts, but I do think if you're going to open your own dojo, you should uh, have, a, should be required to have a background check. That's what I, that's what I think. Uh, honest opinion, not debate me right now. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, all all instructors at Hollywood Judo are background check. So, <laughs> uh, Hollywood Judo only fifty dollars a month. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So since we're we have a this last one's an odd one. Um, I'll I'll let you pick whether you want to pick it or um whether I want to pick it because it's kind of <laughs> I put this one yeah, on here just for shit and giggles. But yeah, you you do it. You you pick okay. what you want. You go ahead. All right. The last one, BJJ is basically just judo. All right. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you want me to pick this one? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, I'm gonna make it make um I'll I'll be in the stand I'll be in the stance of BJ BJJ is basically just judo, so I make you defend. <laughs> so I'm really well, interested in what you're saying that. about what you're gonna say about I, that. <laughs> okay. All right. We set the timer. All right. So Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is just basically just Judo. They basically learned Judo and they just took the Nawaza and made their own sporting rule in it. And that rule is probably from someone who's upset at getting pinned by all the, the wrestlers and Judokas. Um, it, 
I, I, I would say it's like judo with his own rule sets. Kind of like how um, someone would say rugby versus football or vo- indoor volleyball versus outdoor volleyball, beach volleyball, right? right? Beach volleyball. Or yeah, yeah. how pickleball and tennis. Like you you pretty much say they're the same thing. It's just different rule sets with different paddles or different things. But you, you wouldn't really say something different, right? Um, now, I would say that it's evolved past the point of where you would say, for example, table tennis is the same as tennis or pickleball is exactly the same as um, uh, table tennis is as uh, pickleball is the same, same as tennis. But I think there's still enough similarities and basics involved that it's pretty much the same thing, just with different rules. Like it's it's funny watching a lot of jiu-jitsu people nowadays discover things such as Kazushi or like <laughs> it would be the exam- uh, for example discovering how to do uh, um, a triangle back then or something and daily Hiva or like ashigarami and they're like oh this is like new but it's like been done for a long time they're just rediscovering things and it, it it's basically just judo they're just rediscovering the same things it's just different rule sets i want to see what you want to say so <laughs> Oh, I said, I said, I see. I want to see what you're going to say. (laughs) You think you backed me into a corner, do (laughs) you? Okay. Mm. All right. So uh, what angle am I coming at this from? Okay. I think I got one. I think I got a thread. Mm. All right. Fellow grapplers. I know people always want to say that BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, is just Judo. And I can see where you're coming from because it did come from Judo. I know some of us don't like it, but it did come from Judo. It is our cousin or child, our redheaded stepchild, whatever you want to call it nowadays, if you want to call it that, it is that. It comes from Judo. But as all things in life, we evolve, okay? Shotokan Karate is one of the main base of karate for almost every martial arts style out there, modern day. It is the basis for Kyokushin karate, it is the basics for Tong Sudo karate. Okay. Everything comes from something. Nothing comes from nothing. Everything has a little bit of something from it. And that's where BJJ comes from. It came from judo. They have their own belt ranking now. They have their own geese. They are similar to ours, but they have their own geese. They have their own mat style. They have their own way that they train, their own way that they talk even, their own language of their moves. So yes, they are our cousins, our child, our family, our redhead stepchild, but they are not judo no more. They have evolved past that, that they are their own martial art. And you have to accept that. I know it's hard for people to accept that. Yes, they came from us again. I will admit to that to people, but they are their own martial art. Same as no gi BJJ now is having a hard time with them evolving past gi jiu-jitsu. Okay. And please call it BJJ. I shouldn't call it jiu-jitsu because jiu-jitsu is traditional Japanese martial arts. It is Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It is born, bred, and made in Brazil. It wasn't made in Japan. It was based off Japanese martial art, but it is its own thing. That's one thing we have to get past. It is its own thing nowadays. They may use some of our words. They may use some of our moves, but it's not the same stuff anymore. So I hate to argue with you guys about this, but it is this own martial art. And we just have to accept that overall. It is similar, but not the same. So BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Gracie Jiu Jitsu, Machado Jiu Jitsu, whatever you want to call the Jiu Jitsu style, is evolved past us and it is his own branch on this tree of martial arts. Thank you. That's my time. I think you brought up the karate reference and there are many schools of karate, but they still all call them karate in the end, um, especially Kyokushin. And if you look at Kyokushin and Shotokan, especially competition style, they're totally different things, different rule sets too. But in the end, they're still karate. And it's the same same thing here. Jiu-Jitsu has a different rule sets, but at the core all the fundamentals about posture, alignment, kazushi, uh, leverage, 
um th- even the techniques like we said already it's all in judo they all came from judo so it, it, they're just finding new ways of doing things like people will be like well this this and this aren't wasn't in judo but we can look at even judo nowadays there are things like reverse seoi nage the new style of katakuruma um what what else like uh what was that uh seoi nage that they do from the skirt like you're still discovering new ways of doing things but at the very core they're still following judo principles and mechanics to to do those throws but they're they're just inventing new things and i believe that jiu-jitsu is still Brazilian jiu-jitsu is still the same thing they're just doing and they're they're evolving the newaza game of judo even further but at the core the principles they're still judo principles you bring up a great point there anthony now, karate is karate, okay? We all know karate is a stand-up, striking martial art, okay? Now, it's called karate because it all comes from Okinawa, and it was supposed to be Chinese hand. But then it got changed into open hand or intercept. No, it's not. Inter- uh, I believe it's uh, open empty hand, hand. Empty hands. Empty, empty hands. Hand. Yeah. Empty hand, okay? So, yeah, because it's all based off that one style of Okinawan martial art that they used to, the taste system, so it's all based off that. And karate is its own term. It just means this style, open hand. It means their closed hand, stand up fighting. So it's stand up fighting, Gojuru. Stand up fighting, Kempo. Stand up fighting, Tong Sudo. It's the same thing with judo, where judo was invented or was created out of jujitsu, traditional Japanese jujitsu from samurai fighting arts. Kano could have called it Kano Jiu-Jitsu, like most people would call their family style, their own style, their house style, whatever, whatever, Jiu-Jitsu, okay? Kano Jiu-Jitsu, which uh, uh, I believe it was that uh, people used to call it's it not, Kano it Jiu-Jitsu. Never called, already, I believe people used to call it Kano Jiu-Jitsu. I believe people used to call it, I believe people used to call it. <laughs> Can I have my time, sir? <laughs> Can I finish? <laughs> Kano, <laughs> Kano Jiu-Jitsu. But instead he called it Judo. He created his own martial art from that, taking those parts from Jiu-Jitsu to create Judo. And when Judo was taught in Russia, in Brazil, because those are the two big places it went to, it was originally called Brazilian Judo. It was originally called Russian Judo. But because Kano owned that name, he um, had a patent on it and he owned it because it was his thing. That's why it got changed into Sambo. That's why it got changed into Brazilian or Gracie Jiu Jitsu because Jiu Jitsu just means martial art or martial way. Okay. It is the way to say martial art in Japanese. I know people might, might argue with me about, oh, well, this translation, if you use this little, this the kanji instead of that one, it's still jujitsu, but, it, but it basically means martial art and martial way. So you're just calling it Brazilian martial art, okay? Gracie martial art. So yeah, it would have been called Brazilian judo. It would have been called Russian judo, but because he owned the name and it's his name, that's why, that's the only reason why they changed it. So, yes, karate is still karate because it is an untrademark name. No one owned that. Okay. And that's the one like the 12th century who have created it, hold a patent on it. So that's why it's just, that's why it's not just Shotokan. That's why Shotokan karate. That's why it's uh, Tong Sudo karate. That's why it's uh, Kempo karate because it comes from that house and they keep that name to keep it part of the house. But judo, Kano owned that name and he didn't want to get confused with anybody or anything else. So that's why they had to change it to jujitsu, jujitsu, jujitsu. That's my time. <laughs> uh, you, I, I guess is right. I was going to rebuttal, but I think it's fine. I don't, 
I don't, oh. I don't think the point I was, I can't really believe in the thing I was going to bring up anyway. And <laughs> you can't believe and it. It's already 10 minutes all. now. So, oh, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, think no, it's such I, a, I went over my time. I'm sorry. I went over my time. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a controversial topic. But, um, no, in all seriousness, is there anything you want to clarify, not just on this question, but any of the stuff that we say? Did you want to elaborate like your own actual true feelings or, um, I think. I think most people know our true feelings on most of these things. Like they know that I'm for the most part, guys, most of the stuff I'm putting out good points for, you know, playing devil's advocate for some of these, but you guys know how I feel about most stuff. And some of these things you might want might be crazy right now. It's because I am playing a character. All right. I'm playing Mr. <laughs> debate right now. Okay. Yeah, you clearly have are better at act. This is why I can't act. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> I am playing. <laughs> I don't want to say my, I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. <laughs> but I'm just playing a character right now, for the most part, guys. I'm playing Mister Debate. But you guys know how we feel about things. Like, yeah, I like. I think leg grabs be brought in. Like, yes, I think legs should be definitely br be brought back in. But we need to be more strict on the rules. You know, mm -hmm. like I understand. I think, like, I, should, I think they should change the scoring or just ban certain leg grab techniques. Not just yeah. straight up no touching the legs. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just more the yeah. refs need to be more accountable to enforce mm -hmm. the damn rules uh with what was it the next one was showdown um, showdown's easier. easier yeah i do feel i do feel you should work harder to get a showdown person that's my own thing i know you feel that you shouldn't i think you should give them i just, like I just really don't candy. care but i think if you have to then yeah i think it should be easier <laughs> yeah <laughs> he, th he thinks it should be like a halloween in his house he's just passing out black belts just, everybody, everybody really gets a black belt i really really don't like the belt obsession like i, I really don't mm. like it like that's what i don't like I, and legit, I do blame Chuck Norris. I because he's the one yeah. that made karate the most famous in the U.S. and he's the one that was known for these hard tests. Watch, I'm gonna get the the UFC how, system how many after people me now. We know that disappeared after they got their black belt. Yeah, right. So that mm -hmm. I, I'm just playing this. I would rather they just not practice. They not start judo at all. So, all right, uh, judo should be for profit. I'm half and half on that. Like I'm that old school guy that thinks that I should teach martial arts to everybody because that's where I grew up. But I do think we need to make ourselves more valuable. And that's the only way to make ourselves more valuable is to make people pay. People I think, think there's room for both. What, you get so. what you pay for. That's what a lot of people see. That's just how it is. It sucks. You know, I think there's room for both. Like we're cheap, but 10 minutes, well, not even 10 minutes, five minutes away from us. There's that other club mm -hmm. that charges like $300 a month. They're doing fine. So I think there's yeah. room for both. Depends on the market and demographic in your area. Mm-hmm. Uh, warm up. We were both on our right sides. Like I was, I'm very pro warm up. You're very yeah. anti warm up. He doesn't believe in warm up. You he know, you get on the mat immediately 10,000 Uchikomis. That's so what I try to fit in more training. I've been going to jujitsu this past week in the afternoon and judo at night and also went to another mm. judo club also on my, on my quote rest day. I did probably rest day. like, yeah, I did like probably 300 push ups and like <laughs> probably like seriously, I probably did two hours of conditioning out of the four day, uh, four days I was training. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but honestly, I'd rather have two hours of instruction than two hours mm -hmm. of conditioning. Cause I already, <laughs> do, I do conditioning. I have a home gym. I was also doing the assault bike that I got and I was also lifting weights at mm -hmm. home. So combine that. I'm just like, why, why it's am I doing bike. this? Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Yep. So that I really, um, like, I, I could not get out of bed. I just literally Saturday, I sat out in Rondroy because I couldn't move anymore. So. Uh, the next one was cut that for black belts. I pretty much was on my own side right there. Cause you let me be on my own side. And I do have a love hate with Kata, you know, I get it. But then at the same time, I like, I don't get this, but I do blame the way I was taught Kata when I was in Tongsudo and the way I was in Taekwondo. I do blame it the way I was taught there. I really do. I think if I think the way kata is taught in judo and done in judo is way better oh, than yeah. karate and taekwondo. I, I, I do. do. It's a <laughs> I am. I do agree that they should update it a little more. Um, I mean, if you think about the formation of the kata, how they were formed, they were updated anyway, right? Even the gokyo the, the, mm -hmm. was updated. So wh why are we stuck with this as the traditional thing and everyone's so hell bent on it? They're even adding removing throws from the Kodokan bliss. So, and they added new kata. So I think it's totally fair to say you should update it. Um, I love kata personally. I love it. But um, I, I, they're, just like I said, there's my opinions are more nuanced. I'm sure yours is too, so. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. Uh, one national judo federation. 
like I'm bo- I'm on both sides. Like I see the pros of having one. I see the pros of having three. Like it is a thing. Like well, if this one's not being really nego. This one's being so pigheaded about this. I'll go and negotiate with these guys instead. Like I get the whole thing. Like um, what is it? Um, I I keep wanting to say controversial cash, but that's mm-hmm. not the right saying. <laughs> uh, what is it? Um, diversity, some whatever. The more federations create more opportunity. Yeah. Yes, competition. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, for, I I basically don't care because mm-hmm. whether it's one or three doesn't really affect me because they all just care about competition anyway, and I hate competition the way it is now, actually, at least. So, um, yeah, I, I think until we have an organization that actually helps recreational and local judokas that have zero interest in competing, then they're kind of, they're all useless to me. Basically, I think it's good to have multiple, but right now they're all useless to me. That's just just my opinion. So, <laughs> yep. And then after that was a Kosen Judo tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of feel that the way I debated it was pretty much how I feel for the most part. You know, I do think it's it just opened up the eyes and stuff. And I do understand the whole thing of people saying, oh, we're going to lose players to BJJ. And just I think it's just trying to highlight some of our things that we don't highlight enough personally. Yeah, I, I again, I think it's good. For growth of judo so i I'm, i was kind of uh on the opposite but i i was serious about how i think they should really focus on running their events better first and even considering running oh, this kind of stuff definitely so that that i definitely that's like <laughs> why are you yeah. adding more crap to, to manage if you can't even manage the other ones and get get them like a better <laughs> run better first so which some people might disagree and yeah. think it's the way they're running right now is fine which i, I think it's wrong but sure Okay. <laughs> and then it was um background check. Should black belts get a background check? I totally agree. Like from the way I stood growing up doing Taekwondo, and like I always go back to how I grew up doing Taekwondo and karate and stuff. I do like how judo you have to get a background check because there really there is no safe, like it was a safe spot or um not safe spot, um fail safe to keep anybody open for dojo i can go buy a black i can go buy a brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and open up a brazilian jiu-jitsu i, I, I feel bad you <laughs> yeah i say oh my god we're gonna talk about those guys a higher power i'm gonna promote my wife to black belt here and then she's it's gonna two me to black it's belt. Two wives. <laughs> yeah the guy had two wives the dude had two wives <laughs> Anthony, I promote you to black belt in bjj now promote me now now promote me now <laughs> um yeah i think I, I, again, I don't really care about the obsession for blood belts, but um, I do think the belt shodan and instructor license should be separate. Like it should be separate things. Mm-hmm. Like just because you get a, a shodan doesn't mean you should be able to teach. You should have to do, go through a separate process to teach. Um, that's that's yeah. just my opinion. So, yeah. But my thing, like I, I argue, thing that in America we don't have that. We don't have like yeah. a full. You must have a black. You have, must have a certain license to open the dojo. Like no uh, realtor is going to ask you. And they're like, yeah, we have this great warehouse right here. Can I see your judo license? Can I see your black belt license? Where I let you open up? They're like, nah, nah. You got the space. You have the money. Go ahead, open up your gym. Open up your dojo, your academy, whatever you want to call it. You know. So that's the whole thing in America. It's just you. Anyone can open a gym. You don't even have to have a black belt martial arts. Like there's that. Do you remember uh what's that? Uh Keenan and uh uh Keenan Peel? and yeah, that that one yeah. not Keenan, is that Keenan Peel? I don't These know. Are you about, are you, I, I didn't I don't know if you're talking about the BJJ Keenan, like Keenan Cornelius, or are you talking about Keenan and Peel, the comedian? Uh, I'm talking about the comedians, the comedians. Yeah, Keenan and Because they had this one skit. They had this one skit where it's like it was tackle and grapple, baby. Tackle and grapple. <laughs> that's a tackle, that's a grapple, that's a tackle, this is a grapple. And it's this one dude with all these women in behind him. Oh and dude, they're just grabbing him, pulling him down, and be like, if you want to learn martial arts from tackle and grapple, you come do blah 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 blah. And he's like one dude pops up, like, get away, get away, go away. <laughs> but uh yeah, so that's our thing right there. And then the last one was um BJJ being its own martial arts. Like I I do like they're their own thing personally. Uh, it's, it's, fun, it's just funny to me because I'm seeing now the rotation in life. Like everything's comes full circle almost because like the judo guys are like, oh, BJJ is just judo, Nawaza. And I see the BJJ guys getting mad about the Nogi guys. They're like, oh, that's just wrestling. That's just catch. And it's like, no, it's not. You guys do things totally different than catch wrestling does. That's someone that studied catch wrestling and does catch wrestling. 
it's totally different. So it's just funny seeing this like circular of like hate <laughs> coming around. It's really funny. Uh, That's why I put it in because I think it's like basically clickbait. But um, yeah, I think I think people bring they bring it up too much. It it means what it means to you. I think does that make sense? Because in the end, grappling is just grappling. If you think grappling is just grappling and all sorts of grappling is the same thing, just different rule sets, then that's fine. Like that's mm-hmm. fine for you, right? But if you're if for to you like a martial arts style is defined as there are rule sets on what you can and cannot do, then yes, BJJ is different than judo. But if to you grappling is grappling, then all grappling is the same. But to me. I don't want to get misinterpreted because I do think BJJ and judo are two different things. But at the same time, I also think when I go to BJJ, I treat it as like judo. I don't know if that makes sense. I I don't want to say I I go there and do judo because I don't. I actually try to learn BJJ and I don't. I try not to do judo stuff in BJJ, but Mm -hmm. I think they're two sides of the same coin and I'm trying to do like in judo i'm always thinking of like oh i can't grab this i can't touch the legs i can't break the grips i can't crank the neck i can't cross face i can't this but in jujitsu in brazilian jujitsu i feel like it opens up a lot of stuff to me so in a sense it's like yes it's different than judo because it's letting me do all this stuff but at the same time i'm like wow i feel like i'm actually doing real judo you know (laughs) like so that's the (laughs) the little nuance there um that so i don't think it's really important in the end i, I think it's different enough that it's, it's its own separate thing but um i don't want to say spiritually but mentally at least when i do jiu- brazilian jiu-jitsu it really feels like i'm doing the full art of judo in a sense not not exactly but mm-hmm. that that's the kind of sentiment i want to um uh put through so but it's a stupid argument anyway really just do what you have fun what you enjoy so yeah yeah. Well, it's funny because I see the same argument now with since catch wrestling is coming back alive, pretty much. You see the same thing with, oh, well, I'm a collegiate something, something or that. I'm a freestyle wrestler. I'm a folk style wrestler. I'm not a catch wrestler. I'm a catch wrestler. I'm not a folk style wrestler. Like, dude, we're all, it's like, oh, God, just get over your guys' selves. Like, yeah, I mean, even, even within, even within styles, you have people who have styles like, Judo, you have people who are strong in the people who are strong with up close game, people who are strong from a distance, people who are explosive, people who are slow, people have good grip fighting. So if they start developing their own little niche and rule set surrounding that, does that make it a different style? Like I, I, I don't know. I think it's just like really pointless to think about that. Um, mm-hmm. but All yeah, right. it's well, this is a big, huge, long podcast today. What's this, like almost two hours already? Or two hours? Yeah, well, it's, it's two hours? hours, yeah. Oh, that's a two-hour podcast. Thing, right a here. good thing I put a stop to it because we could have kept going, right? On some of the, on some <laughs> yeah. of the stuff. Yeah. All right, so Anthony, is there anything else you want to talk about? Anything else you want no, to bring up? Uh, I do want to get back into recording short videos. Honestly, we've been super busy uh, at the time. Well, I don't even remember. Like, just for me, it was mostly traveling and preparing for new classes and... Uh, the dojo is reopening and all the holiday parties. So um, I do want to get back into recording the the videos because I talked about doing a Kami video and I'm, we haven't done it yet. Um, <laughs> so I, I think we also had some other if videos you look at, If you want to see some Ukemi videos, go on my Instagram. I posted some just for fun when yeah. I had my camera out, had my camera with me. So I had put some basic Ukemi on there. If you have any questions, just, just some basic stuff to help you out. Yeah, so um, we need to do that. Also... I don't think the, tw- the stream thing was very successful, like the live stream thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll, s- we'll keep streaming the the inner dojo tournament because that was pretty popular. But I don't think we're gonna do any straight up live stream. And also, it takes a lot of time. Uh, it's hard to plan. I don't have the, that amount of time now. And um, I will try to do the short videos. <laughs> we t- I talked about doing the short <laughs> videos last year. It was a really highly requested thing, actually. Um, Mm-hmm. I want to do short videos, but I have to, that means I have to go through. This is why I haven't done it because I'm dreading going through all our past episodes and picking all the interesting clips and making shorts out of them. Mm-hmm. And that actually, in the YouTube algorithm right now, the shorts are driving up a lot of uh, views. So 
if you have okay. a favorite episode let or Anthony know, yeah, let Anthony know, yes. let him help know, me tell him help me out. what you like, like that we talk about, what you like that we talk help about, me help favorite you. quotes, favorite funny moments. Like, I, I don't know. So, um, yeah. So if you know any of that, just let me know and I'll look for it and clip it and uh, upload it. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> If you've gotten right. this far, I think we should really talk about this in the beginning because all we always talk about this stuff at the end. And I feel like everyone's <laughs> like end. checked out by then. And it's like, oh, God, they're finally done with this <laughs> stupid game. I can turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I enjoy this part. I enjoy this at the end. OK, and I hope you enjoy it, too. <laughs> all right. So please. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow us on YouTube at the Tommy Talk. You can follow us on Instagram at the Tommy Talk. Please, how about Anthony and let me know what parts you wanted to clip out and put small parts at by letting us know at tatomitalk at gmail.com. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, it is the GRR8 underscore Juan. You want to follow Anthony on Instagram, it is Anthony Throbes. And is that it? Yeah. All right. So as we always in the same, as we always end the episode with the same thing, Anthony. Don't forget to slap the mat and have a happy Chinese New Year. Don't hey, fat joy. Hey. hey, hey, hey.